Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board, yes! Give Tomorrow us a scale, my friend. is the last day of the NBA mm. regular season, ladies and gentlemen. In today's episode, we're going to review the season at large. We're going to talk about some of the seeding because only five, only five of the 20 playoff spots are secure going into the very last day there's a lot of wiggle room there's a lot of things going on before we jump into the episode i want to remind you to leave a like on and subscribe to the channel as we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers go to spotify go to apple pre-download those episodes give us five stars all of that goes a very long way to us getting a new plaque which is all we really care about yes we are 86,000. Yeah. almost creeping up on 90 mm -hmm. and next we creep over on 100 yeah then we just keep climbing, keep climbing milestones. Next, we might even get that two million, that two million plaque. Hundred thousand. <laughs> we gotta get to the million first, don't yeah, we? Right. He just he said get, get the million, million plaque. He's not even gonna put that order in. He's going straight. I don't even think you get one. I think it's hundred thousand, one million, no, five million, give Mr. ten million. Beast a new one. They well, gave Mr. Beast a two million plaque or something like that. Uh, Mr. Or, Beast has a lot more yeah, whatever subscribers. Whatever milestone he just hit. Was it 20 million? Whatever, it million? might no, even be more than, more than 20. Hold on. He just Mr. hit a milestone Beast. they gave him like a different plaque. Like Mr. Beast has 250 I think it was million two, subscribers. I think it was a $200 million oh, dollar plaque. My two bad. million is crazy. I think it was $200 million dollar plaque. Yeah. Let's F up some commas. Yeah, <laughs> 200 million is insane. What's the ceiling on a basketball show? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't put together 200 million subscribers. It's not that many people that care about basketball. But what do y'all think the ceiling is on an NBA-specific show? Not a that's sports not, show. That's not guest dominant? Yeah. And also, that doesn't have an NBA talent on the panel. Yeah, yeah. Like, LeBron and them flew through 100K in like yes, a day. they're almost on a million already. <laughs> yeah, Because they, they have LeBron through. and J.J. Reddick. <laughs> I'll say five. Five M's? No, no, 500. <laughs> oh, 500. Okay. I was thinking like a million. Okay. I think a million is probably doable. Because I, the last channel we had, it was at over three hundred thousand. Yeah, so five hundred. Yeah, I mean a million ain't out of sight. We ain't even really getting our bag either, because we got some other stuff up our sleeves that we ain't really. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, you know You're what I mean? Multi talented. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that kind of takes away from the conversation. Then we ain't basketball centric with mm -hmm. the other shit being yeah. put inside. So, um, yeah, man, here we are at the end of the seat. It, every time I think about the place and the spot that we in. It's kind of crazy, and I know we probably say this every year, but this season has really flown by. Like, I still remember opening night. We was in Denver. We watched the Nuggets, ring ceremony. Um, and to now be here at this spot, we done switched companies. Mm -hmm. We done started a new channel, new set. We done did so much, and the season is done. Like, it, I don't know. It just felt like the older we, we, we get into this, the more season we get, the faster these seasons be going back. No, this season I feel like it's went fast. This was our just what, like this had to be the fastest season to me. What? How many All Stars? Charlotte, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago bubble. So that'll Cleveland. count. Cleveland, Utah, Indiana. Indiana. We've been in this for a very long time. We seasoned. We're seasoned, seasoned vets. So what's that? Six time All Star. Six time All Star. Oh, what what is that? Like a Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum type stat? Uh, we are like Demar Derozan. Demar <laughs> no, no, no. We got all stars. But we got more. How many All Stars you think he get? I feel like Demar has more than six. But I'll, exactly give him seven. Six. I'll give him seven. Oh. Okay, I'll finish. I'll give him seven max. But yeah, you're right. We still got more. We chances still got to more. Get to, more. You know right. what yeah, what Demar's probably done with his All Star appearance. So yes. we like a Tatum. Tatum, Tatum, Tatum is Tatum five, time, five -time, All -Star. time All Star. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I take a Tatum. <laughs> I like we, we still ain't we still ain't got that championship yet. You know what I'm saying? Which would be like for me, my championship is like a sports Emmy. I've been saying it for years. Mm -hmm. I need one of those. Where you, you already know where you're going to put it? Uh, I'm going to be like Nikola Jokic. I'm going to care about getting it, but then I'm not going to care once oh, I get it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna it's going like, to be in the storage room or something. I thought she was going to say, I got to wait for the new house first. Mm. Well, right now, I need anything. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't got nothing. Yeah. We only had to play. <laughs> they, when we were trying to, trying to gatekeep. Well, we got some stuff coming up that could maybe help us get I want to. I want an SP. SB, SB will take that. I want to SB for sure. I want all of them <laughs> shits in the band, just in the background. I could just be like, here, yeah, I'm going to take it. Uh, I don't know how they look. <laughs> <laughs> they look great. No, I'm just saying. But you know, like I said, the Grammy. Mm -hmm. You ever yeah. seen Jay-Z and Drake drink out of their Grammy? Like, if it had some, I'd you would drink out of it? Take a little shot out of it. Sip, <laughs> sip something. You know what I'm saying? Something, I feel you. Something creative. But no, um, I think I know how SB look. They look know. like this. Just a little, a little ball. Exactly. Oh, you can't, drink, you out can't drink out of that. You can maybe turn it into a bat. Oh, I yeah. could crush, 
crush some stuff with it. You yeah. go golfing with it. <laughs> you go why, golf would, with why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> why would I do that? All right, let's talk about some of the stuff going around the association before we get to the year review. Because there are, like I mentioned I'm earlier, nervous. there are only five spots that are in, um, that are locked up. And a lot of things can happen. Now, one of them could have been locked up. A few of them could have been locked up last night, but teams fumble. Like the Denver Nuggets couldn't have officially locked it up. But they, were, they had the Spurs on their schedule and then the Grizzlies. Those yeah. t- should have been two layups. But Wimby and company, Vontae Graham hits the game winner. And now a team that looked like they were going to be secure at the one seed might or finish two, high. might finish three. We don't if really know. If they finish three, is the MVP race closer? Uh, no, I, th- <laughs> I honestly think that everybody already got their mindset and that Nikola Yogi is going to win the award. If you just look at any of the better odds, he's like minus 1,500. That's At that insane. point, it's like that means that they already got the scoop and they already know. NBA.com just put their ladder together. He had Shea number two, yeah. and Shea played like two games in the last two weeks. Luka was <laughs> Shea's been injured. Luka was three like a mom. <laughs> it don't make any sense. Um, but because of last night, OKC rise from number three to number one because it has the tiebreakers over Minnesota and Denver. And um, like I mentioned, Denver does have the easiest game because they got to go against the Grizzlies, who put up a fight against your Lakers, but for the most part are running like five people, basically. Jake LaRavia, boy, that boy playing. Yeah. Jake LaRavia. Playing it wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. Some competitive we ball. need it. Minnesota has to go against uh, the Suns, and the Suns are still in play to make some moves. So it's going to be a good game. Yes. Uh, Denver. Big win for them like last night, too. Bradley Beal, I see you. Bro, and he then, locked up in that last minute. I see still, and he got the little strip. OKC goes against Dallas. Dallas is secure at five. Yesterday, they didn't really play anybody. Yeah, they didn't. Um, so we'll see if Dallas plays anybody they tomorrow. Not. They um, probably want to give. How, how do y'all feel about that, by the way? What? Rest versus rust. I don't think they'll be rusty, though. Yeah, I I just, pr- yeah. The, Kyrie and Luka won't be rusty. I probably, I prioritize the rest part. Yeah, I would do the rest, too. Yeah. Because honestly, I want in. my legs to be as fresh as possible. You yeah. know, I already know people are battling. Uh, people are just always battling injuries around this time. So if you could take a couple of days to kind of heal that that ankle that's been a little sore or whatever, get some swelling down, I'm taking advantage of that. Because after Sunday, the play, the teams that have secured their top six spots basically don't play basketball for a week. Yes. Because mm-hmm. you got to wait for the NCAA tournament to finish up. Yep. Um, you got a little thread on your so, so you got you got like a week's time for the top six seeds Thank to kind of get that rest. Mm-hmm. I, that's kind of why I'm a fan of it. You allow Luka and Kyrie to get this extended rest. They get to come in with fresh legs. Any little knick-knack injuries they had, they now got time to get therapy, heal, recover. They can even mentally just maybe take a few days off and just get away from basketball, maybe go sit on the beach somewhere and just relax and just decompress. Sometimes mm-hmm. that type of reset, it helps you get back locked in. Mm-hmm. And now you come back in the playoffs, and now you back, now you back to your old self. I agree with D. Mills. I, the only thing that I wish, like, as a, a coach in me is it – I, as a fan, I love that it's this close, but the coach in me would like it if we knew who we were playing. So now not only are we able to rest, but we already game planning yeah. for this matchup or that matchup. Mm-hmm. The Mavericks, they're they kind of – They know not, theirs. They, they know yeah. the Clippers. So they can start to do that. That is 100%. There's but no wiggle room. A lot of these other teams, when you talk about the wrestling and all that, you would love to be able to rest and start the game planning, um, which is, again, I know from a player-coach perspective, that's a little tough, but for the Clippers – you lock in, uh, well, the Mavericks, you lock in on the Clippers, you rest, you start to get your game plan and try to figure out if there's anything that you can anticipate, which we'll see. Playoff basketball is yeah. different. The Clippers could come out and do something that they, well, the Clippers, you know, based on Ty Lue's response uh, last night, they, they really worried about Kawhi. Oh, his name, um, yeah. Let me see if I screenshotted the response, but somebody asked Ty Lue yesterday about Kawhi. Um B.A. Turner asked Ty Lu if Kawhi Leonard will be playing in game one. Ty Lu responded, that is what we want to see. Asked again by B.T. These are like beat writers for the Clippers, so I don't really know the full names. Lou replied, hopefully he will be playing. So, not the... That's not <laughs> a, he don't yeah. have a for sure answer. Yeah, I don't think, or, does he? Could, that, could, could this be chess? But also, no. I feel like Kawhi's no. medical team is very good at keeping stuff in With health. the history of Kawhi Leonard, Boom. you can't afford to play yes. chess. I agree with Mike. <laughs> you can't afford to play chess. I don't chess think, right wait, now. wait, wait. What do you mean you can't afford to play chess, though? It just wouldn't make sense. Yeah, Why would you play chess with something that's so, like, delicate? And I was going to say, because I don't think you hear, like, he could possibly play a game one or anything like that off the knee swelling and you're, like, really get really excited for a fan because you know that could be only a one or two game thing before he gets the same thing and he's right back out. What is he gaining from it, KB? He's saying, like, hey, Jason Kidd and them, 
they might be I, trying I mean, to. Pre- I, I, not, I, I think, think they prepare for it either way. <laughs> I think they prepare for it either way. You can't be caught off guard before. Nah, you no, you can't two days before be like, okay, Kawhi's healthy, and then they just panic. Yeah, they, I they, agree. They already ready. They're not, no matter what, they're not going to game plan that you don't have Kawhi. So, but I think they, I think they, sh- if Kawhi is playing, your game plan is dramatically different than if he's not. So if you if you, if you, le- if you leave the door open for either way then that means that Jason Kidd has to do double the work. We need a game plan for if Kawhi is playing, and we need a game plan for if he's not playing. So that's what I mean by chess. No, not we're, saying we're focusing on the Kawhi play. That's what I'm thinking. It's well, more I'm not, so about I don't Kawhi. give a damn about the game no, plan no, I'm, I'm saying that whether he's playing or not, he might already know the answer. But what I'm saying, he might know the answer, but he might not tell the media because what, what benefit does he have to tell them? What benefit did he have to, to? I just it can make it so that Jason Kidd and his but staff has to put not, two Jason coaches Kidd is not there. doing that, bro. You don't think he's putting two two no, things? To, no, that's then I think that's an, that's an that's asshole over, of a coach. That's, that's I, I, I think We're he preparing is. for Kawhi Leonard. That's not but an he, asshole of a coach. But if he is I'm not playing, for Kawhi Leonard. we are, we love our. If he's not playing, that's going to be some simple you, adjustments. No, versus that is not that is not true. That is true. That is not true. So so you think them not playing with Kawhi is just as them. Just no, a, it's it's just a different scheme. It's a different way right. to defend. It's but a what would everything. you much rather have? It's an easier, I, obviously, role. right? But you still it's have to game easier, plan for both. It's an easier adjustment to to plan without him. And, but it's still an yeah. adjustment, right? It is an that adjustment. You need it is to adjustment. Plan for. No, nobody said it's not an that, adjustment. I am if saying Kawhi that you need to playing, plan for it regardless. If, if Kawhi is not playing. I don't think it's going to be a big of a like disadvantage to like, oh, we already no, oh game plan. Y'all are misinterpreting a, what I'm saying. I understand the we game understand plan. Exactly we understand what the game saying. plan. I just think we it's just not. We understand exactly what you're saying. But it's the not thing as he's relevant there with as two I think we're trying to get to. But you okay, still this need is for two. When Kawhi that's all I'm okay, he, he's going to have two game plans. Okay, he and has two game plans. But that's so fucking obvious. Why would you be arguing that? Move that to the side. We're focusing on Kawhi playing. Point blank, period. If he's not playing, we're going to go out there. And we happy. You overthinking. And then that's not what Jason Kidd and I'm going to be doing. We're preparing to You're, see Kawhi. This whole Point thing, blank period. This whole thing where you have two teams that are very, very similar. The mind games, the, the planning, all of this matters more than... Almost anything. We you're not saying there is, there we is, don't there know. is no such thing as we're overthinking saying, when you're when yes you're coming. Yes, it is. Yes, it no, is. Yes, it is. No, there not is for a, a playoff there, series. Hey, there is a such thing as overthinking. Can you give me an example? There, what you doing right now? But I, I, like a real what example. You, what you, the Draymond shit when he's like they just left Jalen uh, Jalen Brown over playoffs. I, I felt like that was kind of playoffs. Over. I think that's a that's a playoff scenario. It might not have been a playoff, but that's a they playoff that scenario. In, they did that in the finals and it worked. But he, but he they let him beat them and then they won by trapping Tatum. And that's not overthinking. They won a championship that way. What you say? They won a championship by leaving Jalen Brown open. We're going to send two at Jason Tatum every single time. They did the exact same thing, and in that one game, Jalen Brown hit seven threes. But in the finals, they did that exact thing, and that made people think, oh, is Jalen Brown better than Jason Tatum? No, they just guard. They didn't guard, that, bro. Well, for, well, first and foremost. We weren't saying that, but I'm for, saying in yeah, general. For, first and foremost, we, but to me. That's that, not overthinking because that game plan worked before. But he said, but what he was saying was in the, in the backfire, you leaving an a all-NBA player open, and now he boom. Now, but it's not but, overthinking because it's worked in a seven-game series is, what, is my point. I mean, yeah, but it also worked in a, in a sense where it came back yeah. to backfire. In and terms Draymond of like, said they'd rather that they give up their shot. Though it's not the finals or the playoffs, Draymond said they tried to do it to see if there could be something that they could have later on. Yeah, Which to me, if we, are, if we had already did it and we already won a championship, why are we well, he even, knows He's not making so it that, to the finals. So, so that matter. seems like... So, so again, it, it is funny that they were preparing, trying to test something for the finals. That, <laughs> but, but, well, and, well, and based game, off what he's saying, it already works. So why are they still? What is that about? It's not only just that they're testing it. I don't know if y'all remember Game Two of that series. <clears throat> they were get, they were trying to get in Jalen Brown's head. Yeah, and then this was them trying to do it again. But like, man, we don't give a damn about whether or not you yeah. take the shots or not. And Jalen Brown hit and, the shots, and, then and they I blew feel like. Out. And if I just remember correctly, in the finals, they were trapping a lot of the table, but Jalen Brown, I'm pretty sure Draymond was on him most of the part. He's playing just one on one. And, and he's playing one on one defense. Jalen Brown won them a game in game two. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brown won them the game in game two. Yeah, Jalen Brown was their best player in that series. Won them Be- the game in game two. They, yeah, they yeah. was they was because trapping they, him. They and making, Tatum yeah. out and of they the didn't, game. And they the didn't mop the flow with them. That went six, right? Yeah, it went six. That yeah. went six. Regardless, the game plan worked. No, for I mean, sure, and they got that for sure. But I do think that, I do think there's a there's a such thing as being able to overthink. I don't I don't think that that's out of this, out of the question for anybody. Now, if you ask me off the top of my head, I don't have a, a, a shitload of things that I'm just prepared to answer that with. But I I'm, I wouldn't sit on this couch and say there's no such thing as overthinking for an NBA coach in a playoff series. I'm sure a, a bunch of people. Um, might have might do some research and we may see some examples in Drop the comments. Some schemes so, that that coaches overthought. Not, in it, the, it don't have to be the overthinking related. shit is okay. when uh, they had Rubio guarding James Harden from the back. 
to prevent the oh, step yeah. back. That, That's that overthinking. Was, I think that was slightly overthinking. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think overthinking always has to be some yeah. built out plan. It could just yeah. be, hey, I'm sitting him because this is, overthinking is anything. It don't yeah. have to be a, a this. We designed this entire well planned out scheme for hours to overthink. Overthinking could be shit. He got two fouls right now. We're finna sit him, and you sit him for too long. Oh, overthinking could be Joe Mazzula not using to, his timeouts. Overthinking could be any that. of this shit. No, I, I, Joe I Mazzula not agree. using his timeouts. I don't think, That's overthinking. I don't think the overthinking like has to be thinking. complicated, like you say. You can but have but he might not be using them because he's like, yeah, shit, I don't want to fuck up the flip. But what you say, my fault? No, nah, I, I don't feel Jackson agree. is. I, I don't uh, think you have to be like. There's a lot of times where you make a simple thing, but you was probably overthinking it because you're over. It's the overcompensation part is which I think is the main thing. For sure. But yeah, I, I I would my focus if I was Jason Kidd in the Mavericks, we're not gonna be blindsided by trying to game plan for Kawhi not being there. Mm-hmm. Because even if he's not there for game one, we're gonna assume that at some point he's coming back into this series. And if 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 we if we go into a game, prepare for Kawhi and he don't play, we still we still confident I was like, that's in what like we got. the icing, I guess. Yeah, we you still know, confident not, in what not, we got. Is the determining factor for y'all, because this is the only series that we know for sure. And we're going to do like a full preview of every single series. Is it a determinative factor simply if Kawhi plays, you have Clippers? And if he doesn't, you don't? No. Or is it deeper than that for so. y'all? No. I still think this is a Dolph like series with or without him. What? If he. Okay. I think we can assume that he's not going to miss the entire series regardless. Boom. It's a matter of Kenny. Is he going to play game one or game two? If he misses game one, what's y'all scale on like, I believe that the. I think the Dallas Mavericks still game one and take, they take home court advantage. Without Kawhi. Yeah. And yeah. Kawhi's there is more like a 50 50 team. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, because once you give Dallas home court advantage, it's going to be tough. Without Kawhi, this swings heavily in Dallas's favor to me. Yeah. Just based off everything I've seen. Um, right now, with a healthy Kawhi, I think a 60 40 Clippers way. I think you remove Kawhi and it's about 70 30, 75 25 yeah. Dallas my, for me. Mm-hmm. No, for me no, personally. It is similar. It's similar in that, in that way. I, I think, think Dallas is just over, it. overwhelming talent. These teams are so similar in every single ad category. It's it's going to be – I mean, we don't know the rest of the series, obviously, but this series is going to be the best first-round series, I think. Mm-hmm. And without Kawhi, you just lose a body for Luka. And it just – it puts a lot on Paul George. You lose a body. You yeah. lose your best player. Yes. You lose a guy that's down the stretch, is as surefire. Close. Right? Like I, – and I don't even want to say from a closer standpoint, but, like, when I watch the Clippers and they have close games whatever – just just being able to have somebody that has spots, it's like Kawhi gets to this mid range spot and it's damn near so automatic. It's just a re- it's a it's, it has to be a big relief for a coach and a teammate to know even even before clutch. This yeah. is nine minutes, ten minutes in the fourth quarter. We ain't even got to six five minutes or nothing like that. Five minutes or less yet. You just going back and forth with the team, going back and forth, and you got a guy who sometimes shit just fall apart and he can just shoulder somebody in the mid range and it's mm-hmm. literally just money, 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 ones. money. Yeah. And then before you know it, Paul George get going and he was able to get going because Kawhi was able to get you through that that first fourth quarter stretch. You know what I'm saying? So to not have that. And we wa- we watched the game against the Clippers where both of them came in. Now you like, you take that away and just the entire threat. Even if Paul George don't have the greatest series, I think coming in there with both of them puts you on edge because you know what they can do yeah. when they both click in. That's why I was saying they offset each other. Or like he he's the balance between it. And with the history, we gonna keep bringing it up because when it comes to playoffs, like this is where it all matters. Like Paul George and James Harden, they've had they've had great times. They've also had a lot of iffy times, but Kawhi Leonard was your, like, dude that you could count on. Uh, like you said, with the mid ranges and everything like that. There's times where he looks damn near unstoppable, you know, when, he, when he's getting into his groove. So to miss that, I just worry about how if they're not going to look all together. You know, I don't, I don't know if they completely hit their stride without Kawhi Leonard in the lineup. And to go into the playoffs without that, or at least for game one or game two, what the Mavericks, Mavericks are rolling – I don't know if I don't know if I'm feeling good if I'm a Clippers fan. I don't know if y'all said this because I was googling something. Um, yeah. Without Kawhi Leonard, just put so much more pressure on James Harden. Yeah, oh, yeah that is sure. just the one. And I don't want to put any more playoff pressure on James yeah. Harden. He's uh-huh. just consistently showing me that I don't know if I can rely on him. And last year, moments. when it was no J- uh, no Joel, he did come out with yeah. his forty piece and help them win a game. He surprised his damn self with that game. Stashy, he does have some a lot of stinkers. A lot of that. stinkers. Yes. Um. So the least amount of pressure we could put on James, the better. I think. Um. 
Here's some other stuff. This is directly from John Hollinger at The Athletic. Um, going to the Eastern Conference, talking about the five through eight seeds, because right now the Knicks secured their self a top four seed. Will it be three? Will it be four? We don't really know just yet. Obviously, Boston is destroying everybody. Shout out to Peyton Pritchard. Um, but the five through eight seeds are still up in play. And right now, if everyone loses or if everyone wins, <laughs> the Orlando Magic is fifth, the Indiana Pacers is sixth, the 76 are seventh, and the Miami Heat are eighth. If Orlando wins, they are the five seed unless Indiana loses and Philadelphia wins. In that case, the Magic are the sixth seed. If Orlando loses and Miami wins, Orlando will be the number eight seed unless Indiana also loses, in which the Magic will be seventh. This goes on for some time. Oh, I've seen the same thing with the uh, the top three seeds in the West. And it was mm -hmm. like the only way Denver comes back on top is if both teams lose and Denver wins their game. Because, yeah, they don't have the tiebreaker. Yeah, it yeah. was a bunch of different scenarios. Yeah, um, and That's why they lost to Wimby and them is so crazy to me. But hey, if, all, if they don't win the championship, it's because of that game. It's because of fucking Dante, Devontae Graham. <laughs> well, Wimby... It, what was that, the third quarter when he's, bro, he went nuclear. I think yeah. he had the 13 yeah. points in like three minutes or yes. something like that. You know what that game 17 points? wanted me to ask y'all? What? Derrick Rose is the youngest MVP at what age? 23? 23. 23. How old is Wimby? Uh, 19, 20. Oh, 20? He just turned 20? Because I know he came in at 19. So he probably. Could he break that record? I think. Because that, I was like, bro, that's yeah, a crazy 20, game. 20 in January. Oh, wow. I feel like. Could he break that could, record? If the Spurs put. That team around him, because Derrick Rose at a young, he had a pretty solid team. Yeah, right? great, yeah, team. great, 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 great team. team. So he just, I feel like if he had the team around, he could definitely put up the stats. Yeah, he could put up some MVP type stats. It's just interesting to see what the Spurs overthinking. Are. Tom Thibodeau, there you go, motherfucker. Overthinking. No way Derrick Rose is in that game. No way oh, Derrick Rose. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's overthinking. No, no, no way Derrick Rose. He's doing that is to this that day. He learned his lesson. He has Boom. not learned no. his lesson. Boom. Boom. There you go. You want to example? Because he did say. Derrick Rose had been out for a little bit. He said he need to get back to learn how to close out games. D. Rose was 22. <laughs> he was 22. So that basically means that Wimby has to win it either next year or the year, or after. The year after, which I feel like that's going to be hard because Luka still ain't got one. If Wimby gets one before Luka, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I can do this podcast or shit no more. Can <laughs> <laughs> Wimby sorry. get one? Yeah, before Luka. But if Wimby, I don't know, man. because still Wimby would have to be a one or two seed. Because yeah. Luca's done everything you could ask for, and he's the four, four or five. Scene, Wimby, could like, put up, ah. Wimby could put up some numbers that's killing. That, that I don't want to say killing, but that's like. I mean, he, he, would, have so? he would have a defensive. Yes, test. he would yes. have like the four or five the steals, three blocks a game. Yeah. Yeah. He would, he takes that edge all the way. My career is stuff. yeah, the defense Literally. definitely. Yeah, I forgot yeah, the about defensive that part. impact would definitely because he's already sway a lot of three point six blocks per game as a rookie and a steal that goes up to four point five with two steals. 4.5, get him in all and of he's these gonna have, he's The rebound is already at 10. He's probably going to go up to 12. But he has to. What is he at right now? 3.6 uh, blocks. Rebounds are at 10.6. Okay. 10. 10. And like I that. feel like he kind of slowed up. We uh, won't even do four and a half. He started <laughs> rebounding we'll the ball four. Uh, better than uh, four. The, just a tick up. Down the road. And then you give him, what is he averaging steals? 1.2? 1.2. Four assists. 1.8. Four turnovers. You said how many assists? Four. Bro, four. that's gonna that's gonna go up too because that yeah. playmaking is crazy. They I mean, said it, it last night in that stream chat. It depends on if he has a point guard with him. If he has a like a Trey Young with him, I think he I still gets no, six. I, I, well, the I way he, he has the way how much he handles the ball and how much he should have the ball. I think the way six. he play makes he's gonna have more. Next than four year he assists. should aim at six assists. Six so he's gonna to have more than four assists. For reference, when, uh, Luca's averaging thirty four nine and ten. The points he shouldn't try to rock with him on. I do think he should be, at some point be a thirty point scorer, but next year is tough. Let's just aim for how many? How much is he averaging right now? Twenty three. Twenty one point two. Twenty one. He need to average twenty five next year. How many rebounds? Ten. Uh, ten right now. Probably he like twelve. Be, 13. He should be at twelve. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do five point eight assists, four blocks, we and got, almost two steals. And we need a guaranteed playoff spot for even to even consider it. Oh, he got yeah. a home court advantage. He need home court advantage. Yeah. He gotta be top four. Yeah. yeah. He gotta be top four. And that's why I think it's not gonna happen. Top four. It just depends on how they go into the offseason. Yeah. What type of priorities they have with the roster. I, I'm just going to start a new rebuild. I'm going to have to do it with the Spurs. Get my boy that youngest MVP title, man. <laughs> on 2K, they be having his ass weak, though. Come, oh, no, bro. 2K simulates we have him as a – he wins DPOY as a rookie. He just won D, DPOY in my second season, averaging 19 and 10. If you sim his whole career, he will win 13 DPOYs. <laughs> <laughs> straight. I need him to no not. No voters for Tegan. I need him to average more than 19, I mean, man. That's going to be there for him. He the average defensive player of the year sound ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. He need to average more than 19 for me. Uh, if the Miami Heat lose, they're the eight seed. I don't know if we care about that. Um, I care about Philadelphia being six. If Philadelphia wins, they will 
be no worse than the seventh seed. If the Pacers lose, the 76ers move up to fifth. If the Pacers win and Orlando loses, the 76ers move up to sixth. So we root for the we root for the Pacers. Get five. Uh, the, the Pacers have the Hawks who shouldn't be playing anybody. Like, even yesterday in their yeah. game against the Wolves, they had their stars play the first, uh, like the first three quarters, and then that was it. Um, and maybe that happened again, and the Pacers should walk away from that. The Miami Heat play against the Raptors again. The Raptors aren't playing anybody anyway. Um, so Pacers win, Philly fifth. Um, let me go double-check. No, I, I thought if they the both had to lose. lose, yeah. the Sixers are up to fifth. If the oh, Pacers sh- win and their Orlando moves, then 76ers are the sixth seed. Come on, Kobe Bufkin. <laughs> <laughs> they need a, a miracle, right? <laughs> Seth Lundy, Kobe I've seen Bufkin. crazier things happen. <laughs> yeah, for Come sure. On. For sure. We saw some of that last night. Um, Miami is the Southeast Division champion. It will be seated ahead of Orlando um, if Miami wins and Orlando loses. Miami moves up to six. If that happens and both of those teams lose, Miami is the fifth. Otherwise, Miami would be seventh. It's just so many moves. It literally pieces. all moves. And we're going to be out, well, some of us are going to be out during some of these games. And I'm just going to have to check ESPN yeah. and see what they say. It's I mean, gonna some be so of these teams are going against teams that aren't playing for shit. So, like, yeah. a lot of them, they should come out and take care of business. So, let me, I'm going to go through the slate. Um, the 76 are playing against the Nets. Should be an easy game, but the Nets did make it interesting to the Knicks yesterday. But the Knicks had a great second half. Um, they say it is, is Cam Thomas the Michael Jordan of Jordan Clarks. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Because he was hitting some shit, man. Hey, that's that when Cam Thomas has it going, bro be hitting some crazy He, he should have been on my all most improved list. Oh, yeah. He just I have not watched them this season. It just when I was putting that list together, I didn't even think about them as a roster. Yeah. Him as I don't blame you. He's so damn good that like you think like, is his cap like six man or is there more? That's like he shows you flashes. Every, nobody of, knows. Because he shows you know. so many flashes of yeah. being so good. Literally, like, nobody and his knows. His playmaking has been better this <laughs> yeah. year, but it's not. That's so crazy. Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> Even when I was doing my little series with the Hawks, yeah. it's like, and I was helping the Nets try to figure out, I was like, I got, you got to let him start because you don't know. Yeah. I had him as a six man, then I'm like, it's his time to start. Yeah. And it's just like, that's his real life, too. It's like, what is, what is he? Cam Thomas is stealing. Because, like, he's so damn talented when you're talking about scoring the ball. Like, yeah. And you know what's crazy? What? That the Nets don't know. Yeah, because they, they suck so bad that they should have figured that out this year. Yeah. Well, we'll get to the Nets later. I had them for something else. Oh. I had them for shit. Ooh. They're your biggest surprise to be ass because you mm-hmm. and Mike thought they was going to be playoff teams. No. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the Bucks play against the Magic. The Bucks might not play anybody because they're pretty secure at two, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to double check right here. But I think they're pretty secure at the two seed, and the Magic obviously need this win. Um, the Bucks. Oh no, they're not secure. They have a fifty percent chance of keeping two, so they might play some of their starters. Yesterday they didn't, they didn't play, play any of Dame. Um, well, they no. didn't play Dame or Giannis. Giannis, Giannis is out for the rest of the regular season, right? Though. But Dame, the rest of their starters play. Chris Middleton was in that one. Brooke Lopez was in that one, pissing me off with those terrible shots and everything. Then who who we see rip up Chris? Mid- that was Lou Dort. Lou Dort, yeah. He literally <laughs> just took his. He literally just took the ball from him. He ran into a fire hydrant. The Bulls play against the Knicks. The Bulls probably not playing anybody. They didn't play anybody yesterday. Uh, and then we got Raptors Heat again. The Raptors don't got nothing going Kobe on. Kobe still suiting up though. Yes, and you know what? I was I wanted him to drop thirty yesterday. <laughs> I just wanted a thirty piece, just one of them. Uh, the Cavs go against the Hornets. Should be a win there. And then the Celtics not playing anybody. A lot of these games have implications for one way and not the other. Yeah. Um, and I but hope I think, that I it's think not that just the better you, team wins every time. I think that goes into trap games too. Mm-hmm. Like you go into that with a mindset of that. Okay, they ain't really playing nobody, and now you got. A bunch of dudes who just just come out there and just play hard as hell, and now you want to. So I'm be fighting for a contract. For real, <laughs> no, facts. For real, facts. Um, Jake Laravia trying to show other teams he can hoop. For hell yeah. <laughs> Here are the games that matter the most. Utah in a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lakers versus Pelicans is a huge game for both teams. Um, That's Lakers Sunday, right? Pulled away. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sunday Shout at two thirty our time. They went from a ten seed to eight seed last night. Yes, now they did. This show is, your own destiny, this baby. This could be a game last tonight, tomorrow. No. Is that tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. 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 Shout out to the Kings for really losing change. that game, too. Oh, man. Yeah. They have After, three I was, really I bad seen losses. The, like, the score, or it was like, uh, I checked the score back again. It was like, whatever, they were up four or six, whatever. And I tuned in, and all of a sudden, I seen Bradley Beal getting that steal in the yep. pass lane. I said, oh, no. They ha- they've blown three 30-point leads this w- in the last week and a half. Uh, not to say 30. I mean 20. Sorry, 20. They had the one against the Knicks, the one against OKC. And then yesterday was 18, I think, not 20, but close enough. That was still a bad loss. Yeah, it's a bad loss. I mean, 
De'Aaron Fox was a clutch player in the league last year. He's just not having that same. Did he turn the ball over at the end of the game? Clutch player of the year type yeah. year. Yeah, that was a tough. That's a tough loss for them because a win there keeps them um, high. And right now, according to their odds, let's see exactly where they're at again. According to their odds, they are they have the highest percent chance to end at eight seed, which mm. is not great. No, because that's a team that like home court advantage matters. That oh, that arena sure. that be rocking. rocking. I was thinking that yeah. I was seeing that last night because uh, we were watching the games uh, literally last night together, and I felt like we could you could hear the volume, mm-hmm. but I felt like when I was watching the Kings game, I was like, bro, the arena just sounds different from when we was watching the Philly game or whatever we was watching. Mm-hmm. If you're the Kings, who do you want to play out of those top three seeds? Um, who do you think you have the most? Oh, you mean oh, I was thinking they need to figure out who they should play against in the play-in first. <laughs> oh, that's true. They got to win because right now yeah, they they're gotta, sitting. They will play the Warriors at nine. They host the Warriors, that Warriors yeah. game. According to the odds, they don't have the highest odds of keeping that nine. Um, they actually have a good odds of going up to eight, which means they have to they have to go against the Lakers in the first round of the play in. If you're the Kings, I don't know, man. Of those three top teams, let's say, yeah, assume that they do win their two yeah. playing or one playing game. I don't think they match up well against None of them, any no. of them. Yeah. Honestly. And now, I know they have the, they have won the season yeah. series against a few of these teams. I don't want to act like they can it's a it's a sweep or nothing, but for a seven game series. It's kind of tough to think about them advancing to the second round. And it's Daniel. crazy thinking a play in in a must win situation. You got to go with Steph Curry. Yep. Like that's that's just not something I want to deal with. But hell, we seen Steph and them lose two play in games in one year before. We did. One yep. of them was still LeBron, though. Yep. And then they came <laughs> back and won that damn championship the next year. So uh, yeah, all I, all we need y'all to do on Sunday. Draymond don't get suspended. They probably not in this situation. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. He had what, did he score yesterday? I think it was over no, over the field. He, he didn't take a shot. Triple double with no points, <laughs> no shot attempts either. Yeah. Shout out to yeah, him. Yeah, triple double, double double. I mean, I'm so sorry, double double. Oh, I thought, I thought triple he had like, double with no points is insane. No, I thought he had like ten <laughs> steals or something. Yeah, bro, I my teammate something. got a triple double with no points. I'm trying to get him that quadruple <laughs> double. <bro. laughs> well, they lost the damn game though. Steph Curry took a really tough shot at the end he of did. this one. Yep. A one headed floater. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it's tough, and that's a big win for the Pelicans who almost blew it. CJ McCollum, your boy, been been on the yeah, burner the yeah. last Hooping. two weeks, man. Hooping. Burner. I, mean, I got him for no one, one of the things we want to talk about uh, later on, too. Okay. They showed up their rotation, too. Guys. That's the first time I only seen them play like a limited amount of body. I think they play like eight people. Mm-hmm. Just trying to get that playoff rotation ready. Yep. I don't think Jeremiah Robinson Earl is in the playoff rotation, but <laughs> yeah, he only oh, plays well, seven yeah. minutes, but I think that was because of. Uh, Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking about a different game. But, yeah, he only played seven minutes. It was really like a real seven-man rotation for them in that game. Uh, no Shout bigs, out to Dyson Daniels, bigs, man. Yeah. I'm rocking with Dyson Daniels. They were running a lot of small ball lineups, which I love to see. Like, um, yeah, because Val only played 16, 16 minutes. So, yeah. And he was a minus 17 <laughs> 16 <laughs> minutes. But they were running a lot of small ball. With the green, he said, come here. Right next to me, big fella. Uh, Shout but, out Big Val, though, man. Yep. Big Val, who you taking? Nurkic or Big Val in 2024? Val and Jonas. Oh, okay. Also, I guess it kind of depends on the team. Yeah, what do you need? Do you need somebody to get you a bucket? Because it's probably Big Val. But what do you just need to do that's just on rebound and just play defense? It's probably Nurk. Yeah. Uh, what's option number three? Vucevic. Nikola Vucevic. Oh, no. Yeah, we good. <laughs> <laughs> we good on it. Because <laughs> I saw us. Uh, what's his name? Sagano? Yeah. Just put up a better stat line than, than Vucevic had all season long. Yeah. <laughs> my boy, my boy checked in the hotel. He didn't know he was gonna play. <laughs> um, Kai Jones to the Clippers. Clippers wave with Josh Primo. Is it too late for him to make the playoff roster though? I thought March first was the. Yeah, I thought March. Yeah. Okay, Kai Jones. Um, Clippers take a chance e- on a talented twenty twenty. He was overseas hooping with the ball. <laughs> right. He was hooping with that Six ball. Six foot he eleven did. man. A six foot eleven big man recently completed. They gonna play a song day. in the intro or uh, when they warm ups. Oh no! Please don't do that. You remember when Kevin Durant posted not, it's his pretty, shit? It's yeah, pretty Kevin, catchy. I remember KD posted it. Uh, all right. So before we get into our 2023-2024 season review, we Whoa, gotta hear a word from our sponsor. This tweet. Oh my fault. It was a typo. Why should it? you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two oh. words: Caesar's Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesar's can offer: hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app; it's an empire. I see what you mean about him having to delete the tweet, though. Great man. Yeah. It was a typo <laughs> in it. Great man. It was a typo in it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear KB say that. that Why would you have your headphones here? 
Because I don't like, I feel like when I have it in, I touch my face all the time. Mm-hmm. And like it, because they keep falling out, so I constantly have to go like this. And so like it was getting annoying. And now I just feel way more comfortable without it. Well, let's get into this season preview. Who, who wants to, or review, who wants to, to start us off? Okay, I'll start us off. So we did most surprising and slash most disappointing. Um, for most disappointments, I have the Brooklyn Nets. More so, um, not even, the record-wise. So it was what I said. Yes. He said, said no, nah, it ain't it. No, I thought you said for, for surprising. I have, like, biggest disappointments and I have biggest surprises. Like, that's how I have it categorized. Well, however you want to slice and dice it, they in there. Yeah, they in there. <laughs> um, Record-wise, yeah, they are bad. I did have high expectations for this team, but more ben so, Simmons, baby, I was expecting Yo, ben Simmons to be there. I but, just don't. But yeah, not, I still don't. I can't wrap my mind around y'all thinking they were going to be good. They're disappointing to me because they just sat on their chips. Like they just at the <laughs> deadline, they had Mikael Bridges, Dorian Finney-Smith, Nicholas Claxton. They have all these good, valuable bodies, and they sat on them and they made no moves. Well, what I was, own, I kept being told they don't own their pick. That's what that, I was kept being. But told. I'm still, I'm still. I agree with what you. What kind of boatload of picks do you want for Mikael Bridges? That is that is my thing. Why are you sitting up hoping that a team throws you four or five first round picks when they have when you first received them and you declined the offer and now you still sitting back hoping that a team is going to give you that when every year his value is only going to go down. I hope I, they don't I, I use just, this clip next year for Mikael MVP case. <laughs> <laughs> He turned yeah. his career around, <laughs> and they playing this. <laughs> These, yeah, the social media teams definitely be listening to what Derek's saying, and they say, "Clip it, clip it, clip it." Seventy like, sixes did it last. What, what, what? Who do they think Mikael Bridges is? I, 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 no, <laughs> no, that's gonna clip. That, no, that's that is crazy. gonna clip. Because <laughs> that's the homie too. That's yeah, crazy. That's crazy. I think he's a good basketball player, right? He is a good basketball player, but like, he's not four or five first round picks good. Would like, you say that if he was right here between me and KB? Paul. I would have to be I would have to be honest with him and let him know. I don't think you were four or five first round picks. <laughs> hey, all McKay's gonna do is this. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's why I'm disappointed in them. They just got so much talent that teams want and they just didn't make any moves. What's your pack, packing order of what you, the trades? How how you would have did it? So Mikhail is your number one trade chip. Yeah, I w- Claxton number two. Yes, and then Dorian Finney Smith. You could have okay. got two seconds for Dorian Finney Smith. And you Cam Johnson, you keeping or you flipping him? With that 25 per year annually, money. I'll probably keep Cam Johnson. See what I can see what the potential is. But like, I might just, not have no choice either. And also, I just feel like they team just all just full of like second, third, fourth option guys. You don't have that clear cut guy on the roster. And they're talking about going to this offseason trying to build around Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges isn't that guy. It's yeah, just I was I was just off the train once I kind of feel, realized that. <laughs> I was just off the train once I kind of realized that Mikael wasn't going to be what we kind of seen him when he first started, like that 27, yeah, that first, like all that. That like, trade boost that you always get. Yeah, but after a while, I just kind of fell off that train. Like, I, that's why I didn't have him on my disappointment because it's – they don't have the talent. They don't have the talent compared to a lot of these other teams, which they was say early in the season. But I was with you. I thought they could be one of them teams because you don't always need the star power to be a solid and good team. You just need the – like, you need solid role players. You need – a obviously, they had like a – 2A type of dude or whatever. They had Cam uh, Cam Thomas start to – they had stuff. It just still was not enough talent for these other teams at all. Yeah, yeah. I just – I never when we were talking about standings and stuff, y'all mm-hmm. were saying Brooklyn Nets in the playoffs. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Yeah. They just had two – they have too many uniform type pieces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they had so many people that play similarly. The coaching was always a question – Mikael is your best player is a question. It's just never made a ton of sense. That's why they're not disappointed to me because I ain't had no damn expectations. Yeah, I think they eventually got into – they found, like, a way to play, which was that they probably was going to defend their ass off. Well, when they was competitive, at least, defend, and we was going to make a lot of threes. You yeah. know, we was going to space out. Dwayne Finney-Smith going to shoot. Mikael yeah. going to shoot. Spencer, everybody's going to be able to shoot threes. My, my biggest – it was just more so, like, in the front office, mm-hmm. just sitting on those chips like that. That's That was disappointing for me. I see that. To go from the roster with KD, James Harden, and Kyrie to now you trying to fight with this, you got to be a little mad that some shit ain't shake with that roster. They just getting their ass whooped. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, staying on the topic of disappointment, me and KB ain't feel like y'all did against it with the Nets, but we felt that way with the Hawks. <laughs> oh, I yeah. look at the Hawks, I was like, I'm not even going to say that because I know y'all got the Hawks. Yeah. I, and the thing that like continues to disappoint me with the Hawks is like I can't quite put my finger 
on what the issue is. Yes. Now, obviously, we can go into their team stats and mm -hmm. see what they lack in and what they don't have. But just taking all that away and just looking at the roster on paper, you have Trey Young, you have DeJounte, you have Hunter, Jalen Johnson, Clint Capella, Neka Kongwu. Um, you got some young talent with Kobe Bufkin and Griffin. I, I, I just... For them to, and again, it's not that they have to run off with the East or anything, but to be as bad as they have been with Quinn Snyder now in his first full year, mm -hmm. I just don't understand exactly what, what they need. And yeah. I, I, I look at them, and I know we have Hawk fans uh, in our community and whatnot, but I, I kind of just like, usually I can put my GM hat on for some teams, but when I look at the Hawks, it's like I don't really know in a real world, not in 2K landscape yeah, yeah. like I've been doing on YouTube, but like in a real world, I don't I don't really understand what, where they go. I have a uh, an article that I read the other day uh -huh. with a trade, um, and I'm going to try to pull it up really fast here. And y'all tell me, because I, I didn't think this was a great trade, but it made yeah. me think about it, okay? okay. And basically, um, I, don't, I, I can't give you the exact details I look for, but it, it involved... DeJounte Murray being traded to the Pelicans in exchange for Brandon Ingram. Okay. Okay. Um, and it was more pe moving pieces, but let's, yeah. that, those are the two main things. And Which is a trade that I brought up on this show. You did. Um, it makes sense to an extent. Okay. Yeah. Is I it the perfect trade? No, but at least, like, what, what I was th saying in that video was if you're going to trade Trey Young or DeJounte Murray, I feel like a lot of the trade packages you've seen people draw up is like, oh, we're going to get our own first-round picks back from the Spurs, and we might get an extra first-round pick too. But if I'm keeping DeJounte and Trey and Trey Young, those first-round picks aren't as valuable to me unless I'm trading them again to get somebody else because DeJounte is under contract. He's a real NBA player, an all-star caliber player. We don't really care about being in the lottery again. Hell, we've just been in the lottery. Well, they've had playoff appearances, but you get what I'm saying, not yeah. really been good for some time. So if we're trading one of the two away and keeping both. the other – then you get somebody back, or you trade both if you're going to hit the reset. There is no trade one for the young Assets. players. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't yeah. make sense in my mind. These Atlanta Hawks fans been they've been hungry for a run since the, the conference the one. finals. Exactly. Yeah. And as much as I love Dejounte Murray, him leading your team with young asses, what does that get you? Just a bunch of really good Dejounte Murray games. Yeah. And he's going. He. I don't think at this point he. he I think he might want to dip from that too. Mm -hmm. I think the attraction to come to. Atlanta was to play with uh, Trey Young for them to figure it out and for them to 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 win. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I agree with that. One thing I do like about the Brandon Ingram trade is Dejounte signed the extension. Brandon Ingram was on the last year of his deal, mm -hmm. so you bring in another option, another body to try to make something work with Trey Young. If it does not work, you are able to allow Brandon Ingram to go, or if it does work, you can bring him back. But it doesn't keep you. Pigeonhole. Pigeonhole into yeah. something. This DeJounte Murray thing with him signing an extension, you're not necessarily pigeonholed because obviously you can trade anybody. But it's like, yeah, it puts you in that, that state of limbo of like, oh, if we trade, trade, and we keep – they might need a hard reset where you do yeah. trade both because, I again, I'm looking at it from a sense of the long run. So, like, I don't I don't know if the, the, the simple – I guess what I'm trying to say is, like I've been telling people for a while, NBA fans in today's world, they're a lot more smarter. It's just like consumers in the world. It, consumers are a lot more smart. You can't fool them. So if you trade Trey Young and you try to say we're taking assets and we're going to retool, I don't think your fan base buys into that because they understand that there's a particular ceiling with a DeJounte Murray-led team. Yeah. Yeah. You can't sell it on that bullshit. Like you maybe have been able to in the 2010s because we've seen franchises do that. So I do think that, you know, you have to you, you have to make a hard decision on whichever way you want to go. If we are trading Trey Young, we are trading DeJounte Murray both, and we're just going to eat shit for a few years and our fan base is going to be upset, but we promise y'all we're going to get this quickly together. Um, or you hardly keep you, – you keep Trey Young and you say, F it, we are living and dying with Trey Young – and we're going we gonna to make this work by any means necessary. We believe in Jalen Johnson, and we'll just let these two cook. We'll open up some money, and we'll find our third guy. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to hope that Jalen Johnson can make an all-star leap mm -hmm. the next year after having a most improved player type of leap this year. So, uh, I, 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 But again, it's not so singular to figure out the route that they can go to get the success they wanted mm -hmm. because – their success wasn't minimum. They reached the Eastern Conference Finals. Yep. yep. So that kind of that was kind of like, man, that was kind of bad because now it's like a second round appearance don't really do shit for them. 
But yeah. at the same time, I have no way for y'all to get to the NBA Finals. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like they've been kind of changing it up a little bit every year, whether it be the John Collins thing or the the, coach, uh, the coaching change. Like, they tried to make small things, but it just hasn't worked into, like, the right fruition or fruition, whatever it is. <laughs> and then you see the Somewhere. ceiling. <laughs> and you see the ceiling fruition. again. So my thing is I like the Brandon, the Brandon Ingram idea just because it gives you that more, like, flexibility. But it also gives me the idea, like, it could be the also like the point where you see this is the same ceiling as last year, like even with Brandon Ingram. Yep. So Let me just, ask you this: yeah. There's another guy. Is speculation already coming out of Cleveland with the, with Donovan Mitchell? Is Donovan and Trey Young as a backcourt? That just that's a lot of damn offense. Uh, hey, with, at this point, I'm taking my chance. <laughs> yeah, I would say Trey Young is such a talented player. Trey Young's such a talented player. I feel like you got to try to make some work before I'm you just, just get up. I'm just shooting. I'm just shooting, <laughs> yeah. Derek. No, Don't no. blame me if, it, no, if it's I a know. blank here and there. I'm just, I'm just shooting, man. I was just saying that's a lot of damn offense right it now. It is. But I'm thinking, too, they don't defend anything. Oh. They they don't play we no defense. Mitchell. We might have we might have to hire Mike D'Antoni. We, do, <laughs> we doubling down. They don't play this any shit. defense. We doubling down, baby. We doubling down. Yeah, Quinn Snyder can fix a defense. Then it, I don't know. It might be cooked. <laughs> um, my most disappointed team is the Golden State Warriors. Mm. They're nine games over. It's a good season. It's a talented Western Conference, but they have to win two games to get in. And I've mentioned this before that on my podcast, when the season was started, there were two teams in the Western Conference that were two of the teams that have been disappointing. Um, and I said aliens would have to come down and abduct their best player for them to miss the playoffs. <laughs> and the Warriors were one of those teams. And they're one loss away from missing the playoffs. Like, I know they went through a lot this year, right? Yep. Rest in peace to Decky. Um, yes. That was something that could not be seen. or I, don't, I still don't understand how they're back hooping after experiencing that. Um, but, like, Draymond Green getting suspended, avoidable. I might, Maybe I those might add to it. getting abducted. Maybe he got abducted. Yeah, that was I was going to say. No, he got abducted. Andrew and Wiggins. <laughs> that, too. One of my disappointed I had put down, and you disappointed kind of surprised, too, because mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know if we always expected this from this player, but Clay Thompson was playing so bad at one point, they put him to the bench. Yeah. And they started air pods. Luckily, he's kind of looking back he's like Clay Thompson. Yeah. But that's the future because air pods is going to yeah. he's not going to be a rookie mm-hmm. in these next couple of seasons where he's going to have these little moments where he's still trying to figure shit out. You know, that Ricky Wall come. Some people. Last know, year, they were the worst role team in the NBA. The but best they, role team this year. No. No, I'm asking. Do you know oh, who it is? Oh, no, uh, I don't know. Celtics. No, do you know? You have a guess? It's not the Celtics. No. The Knicks. No. Uh-huh. You have a guess? No. It's the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh, no. yes, it is. Um, yes, it is. Pelicans. Wow. Um, but anyway, the the Warriors were the worst road team in basketball. Now they're 25 and 16, which is damn good. Last year they were 33 and 8 at home. Now they're 20 and 20 at home. They just can't, they can't pick which way to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay, now we're way better on the road. But we suck in our home building. Which is crazy because they used to have one of the best home court advantages. There's no, let me double check this. Them, oh my God, they're one game better than the Bulls at home. Every other team, every other playoff team, playing team is significantly better at home other than the Warriors and the Bulls. Makes no sense. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about a team that was like damn near hard to beat at home at one point. Mm -hmm. They just, they were disappointed to me. I mean, they could still make it. They've been looking a lot better over the last two weeks. Yeah. But for the grand scheme of the NBA season, hella, hella disappointed. Mm-hmm. To go to the opposite of disappointment, um, I'm going to go a different route. We've been talking team heavy. This dude is a guy that I like coming into the NBA um, because I felt when I watched his film, getting ready for the draft process, I thought that there were some few things that I liked. He reminded me of a guy um, that I liked when the Knicks drafted him. But I was shocked because the offense ain't hit immediately. He was became more of a defensive guy. But I started to buy into that because I'm like, if the offense catches up, this dude can be can be really, really, really good. And I still believe that way. I believe that way so much that I just started to get the desire of doing a whole new YouTube series with his team because I'm like, I want to I want to play with this dude. Pause. I want to I want to. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to spit it out already. <laughs> Who is it? Denny. Oh, oh yeah. 
That boy Denny, man, what a year Denny has had, and and it's a shame. <laughs> he did like talk for like two minutes setting. I, I like to set it up because right <laughs> I just I seen Michael with again one inches and inches, his fingers started doing. <laughs> so I'm like, let me just <laughs> drag it out. But no, Denny, man, I, I I'm such a fan of the season he's had. I know it's tough to have um, anything positive <laughs> to say About out of Washington, <laughs> but he's had a magnificent season, and to see the offense kind of you know gravitate towards the defense. I think Denny could be something real nice as they develop their team. I think this is going to be a very important offseason for them um, because they have to find a way to pivot. They they have some shit, but they have some shit yeah, at the same literally, time. Literally, yeah. So they need to figure out a, a progressive way to pivot the direction and some of the things that they have. Kyle Kuzma is not a bad basketball player at all, but I think for what they're trying to do, he don't fit that. I was mad he didn't get traded, honestly. And they, they, they might have to do the pennies on the dollar type thing where you you don't give them away for nothing, but I don't think you should hold that near and dear to your heart like Brooklyn was doing with, with Mikhail. There's I, no reason to. There's no reason to. There's no yeah. reason to. And honestly, like before, I really just didn't watch the Wizards like that anymore. Like Kyle Kuzma, I was thinking like, man... I know the Wizards suck, but he's having a really good, like, mm-hmm. underrated season. That's two in terms years of, back in the back for him, too. In, in terms of, like, I mean, when he first came in, we knew he could just kind of fill it up and about uh, fill it up with the uh, scoring. Really, he's a pretty solid rebounder. Can play make. Can, Always like, been a really good rebounder. Yeah. Can run a little bit of the point four role defense. It's kind of hard to gauge because it's the Wizards, sure. but it's like with the Lakers, he was high. You can, you can, ins- yeah, yeah. On a different team, I feel like even if the stats weren't the same, because obviously his opportunity might be a little bit less, he could be a really good contributor in terms of what he can bring to a team instead of just like he gonna be a knockdown or a spot up shooter. Like he could do a lot more than that. He's yeah. pricey right now. Yeah, but yeah, if he if he if he was on one of these playoff teams as their six man or as a complimentary piece, um, that would be good. Because he's so pricey, I think that eliminates a lot of teams. I would yeah. love to see him in Philadelphia. If you take him out, <clears throat> take Tobias out and put him, mm-hmm. I kind of would like that. But at this price, I think when they're done with Tobias, they're going to bring Tobias back for a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. So that kind of eliminates that them. That money's going to Paul George. Um, absolutely. And I'm here for it as a Paul George fan, depending <laughs> on how these playoffs go. Depending on how these playoffs go. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing. And then they have the same thing with Jordan Poole, a guy who I think in a minimized role off the bench, really, really good. But at that price, he's a pricey six man. So I actually don't – I mean, this is really like their first year of their rebuild, right? For sure, yeah. Um, it's been a while since they've been good. So it's like they were like in a retooling phase of Bradley mm-hmm. Beal. I just like that they made their direction. I yeah. do too. Uh, I don't like the timing of it. Again, when Miyama was in the draft sure. last year. Yep. But better late than never. Mm-hmm. Even, even, even not getting Wimby. I mean, dog. You could have got damn near fucking uh, Brandon Miller or something. Like I don't. It's a know. lot of good players. You know, it's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of good players. But I do like Bilal and, and, and what he projects to be. I think you have him and Denny on y'all wing with the upside that they can have defensively. I think whoever you draft this year um, should be a good player. I think they really need. If I was in that front office or if I was consulting them, I would let them know this does not have to be the home run pick. Stop trying to hit a home run. Just get really good talent. If the home run is there, knock it out of the park. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> what happens with Johnny Davis? That's what I'm saying. What happens with Johnny Davis? That right there <laughs> makes teams feel the need to really hit their home yeah. run. Don't do it. Y'all did really good with Bilal. I think that was a really good pick. Get some really good talent and keep that same mindset right now. But don't feel like we got to make that sensational splash. We need to get Trey Young out of here. To make up for Johnny Davis. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. But lead, slowly build, man. Slowly Slowly. build. Because as soon as you try to hit that home run and make up for Johnny Davis, you're going to find yourself back into a spot where we all scratching our head. I like Tristan Vucevic. I like Denny. I like Bilal. I like Corey Kisper. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but I do like Kisper. Kisper had a really good season. Um, Really good season. They have, and it's hard to say because they are ass, but they have some things. And we don't know. Jordan Poole could have a bounce back season next yes, year. Yes, yeah, I'm not could. putting it out of like, yeah, it's possible. Because he's had some moments this year where he did look okay. He looked pretty good. And so. that's all I want to say. I don't want to take 19 minutes to talk about the Wizards, but that I'm just, I like Denny, and that the likeness of Denny makes me think about the Wizards in a positive light. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go surprising as well. Um, I got a few guys, but I'm going to go with Aaron Neesmith as my first guy. Um, Aaron Neesmith has taken a big jump this season. Uh, I thought originally he was just drafted to the wrong team. Um, it was very hard for him to go to Boston and develop. And then when they made that trade for um, Malcolm Brogdon, I was like, this is a blessing in disguise for him. 
He gets to go to a team that's led by Tyree Talliburton, who is a guy who's notoriously known for making guys around him better, finding his guys in transition in threes. Aaron Neesmith, he's a lob threat. He can catch lobs. He defends other teams' best player, and he shoots 41% from three this season. He's made a big jump in the three-point department. So he went from a guy that was kind of stuck at the end of Boston's bench not being able to get minutes now to now he's now in a much better role playing almost 30 minutes a game guarding other teams' best player, and now he's a 40% three-point shooter. He literally mo – he's he came in, and now he's – molded his game into where he's literally the prototypical guy that a lot of teams will want and will Indiana's going to love to have him for the next few years. At least I would mm -hmm. hope they would keep him because his price tag is now going up. Teams are now noticing how good he is. And teams I know are he signed, want. didn't he? I don't remember. but I, I think he yeah, I think he signed his extension. I wouldn't okay. be surprised if they threw him. They already yeah, three years, $33 million. Oh, so steal. Oh, so that's he, a he's key just, so deal he was too. Good. He was Damn. good for them last year. I yeah. felt like they just they just had him honestly playing like the fours, so they yes. kind of needed that size. But you remember what he shot at college? No, mm -hmm. fifty two percent from three. Oh shit! Oh yeah, I remember Did that. I remember that. At the, yeah. He was at the airport. He was at the airport. The and I remember right. he was like, "He's not gonna have come in because yeah. they're going to know from they already day know the scout report that he is going to be an elite shooter. So he might struggle with the three to begin with, and mm. boom, but he's back. Yes, mm. he and you see that again because he it's more of just. A shooter though it's just he rounded it out mm -hmm. so he's yes. that's why i think it's just so underrated is like the growth of players throughout their career and we see it's just like not everybody has to be that 25 point score to be impactful in the game uh, i'm gonna throw out another surprise i got the knicks up here julius random basically missed half the season traded a start oh two rotational pieces away for og he missed a lot of time and honestly they're still a top seed out uh east and I don't think nobody really wants to play the Knicks. Like, they just play so gritty. And obviously, Jalen Brunson has put on an all-NBA year. Like, they they really got some going, even without some of their players that, like, you would think they would need to go. Why isn't Jalen Brunson the most improved player? He was on my know, first team. Man. I don't know. To be an MVP, pit, uh, MVP not there, but know, to be in the candidate <laughs> as, a, as him, five, it's got to be, six, yeah. yeah. It's got to be, like, a really good feeling. And I... And I'm not even doing it to be a homer. I'm just going off of how others view the award. You know how we re review it. Yeah. We, yeah. We Kobe like, White, baby, it's yours. Yeah. We, we like the mystique or, you know what I'm saying, Victor, Oled uh, Victor Oladipo being nothing into something. that. But based on how everybody else want to perceive and to take the award, Jalen Brunson, shit, how is he not one? Yeah. He was my my one of my most surprised um, things because – I don't know if y'all remember two up two years ago we did the off season episode where we were talking grading off seasons. Yeah. You was critical and I had of them us? at I had them at B minus. Okay, one critical. I enjoy the Isaiah Hardenstein signing more yes. than I did the yes. Jalen Brunson one <laughs> for sure. You followed um, him on Instagram and shit. That's the guy. You followed me back. Yeah. Um, and come up I here, brother. I, I remember. <laughs> 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 I remember saying in the episode like Jalen Brunson is a really good point guard, but he's not going to change your franchise. He's, he's changed, changed the franchise. franchise. <laughs> and, and when we were in Houston on our live show, this is before the Damian Lillard trade, we were doing a live episode and we were doing our ranking of point guards. And we were like, damn, Jalen Brunson is the highest Eastern Conference, Conference guard. Yeah. yeah. And that was before Dame. Yes. If we yeah. did it again today, he's still, he's still Dame is one, there and yeah. he's still number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that Where is, is he going to be when we do it? When we do our, where is he going to be? You got Luca. He'll be Shea. behind Luca and Shea for sure. Probably still behind Steph Curry. Um, not probably. He'll still be behind Steph Curry. That's three. And he's right there. Yeah, top five. Him. Top five. Yeah. Small I can make an five. argument for Kobe White, but other than that, it's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's in there. <laughs> uh, Unless you. Is Devin Booker counting as our point guard this season? That's a great question. Is, let's let's listed, think about that when is it's he time. Okay. As a point guard? I don't that When we have to let's do look, all of that, the fans don't really understand <laughs> how stressful that is. I don't want to have to think about yeah. this shit. No, let's see. Right. Uh, ESPN still has him at a shooting guard this season. Okay. But do they still have Brad, Bradley Bill as a shooter? They probably have both. <laughs> <laughs> a basketball reference has him as a point guard this year. Okay. Yeah. I think you have to have Devin Booker as a point guard okay. this year. There we go. Technicality wise. Um, but Jalen Brunson has been better than, than Devin Booker this season, at least. So yeah. he'd still be higher. Um, so yeah, that's, that was just a big surprise to me. Like, of all the things you mentioned, they lost their, two, their second best player and the third best player. It's like, hey, we still going to be decent. We still going to be good. Jalen Brunson has the highest usage rate since the All Star break. It makes sense. It doesn't matter. They just Randall. win. They just win. Um, when you don't have Julius Randle, you have, and your point, your usage rate is just going to That's what scares me about the Knicks, though. What? He's having a career year. Dante's having a career year. 
Isaiah Hartenstein's having a career year. They just have a lot of people playing their best basketball right now. Dante is my guy that I'm watching. Whereas, like, as a Knicks fan, I am no hate on him. He's always been a really good player. I am preparing for him to maybe not have the same year next year. Yeah, I, I hope that the expectation doesn't shift for him to be that. Because the first couple years of his career um, and Milwaukee. 36. He was a 26% three-point shooter, 33% three-point shooter, 38%. And then when he got traded to Sacramento, I don't know if y'all remember, he played for Sacramento yep. for seven to 25 games. Uh, 37%. I thought they was going to keep him. And then last year, he's a 40%, and this year, 40% as well. But the volume has increased. He went from a five three-point per game guy last year to eight and a half attempts per. And there was an article written, I want to say by Anthony Slater. But in the article, he it was talking about Dante DiVincenzo. And obviously, Dante gave a lot of credit to being on the Warriors last year. Yeah. And Steph Curry yeah. when improving his shooting and stuff. So maybe it is real, but I don't want people thinking that he's just going to come in next year and shoot 40% on nine attempts again. Yeah, it looked real, though. He could. It looked real, though. He could. It he real, could. Though. I just if, don't you know see him having it's that the same volume. It's not this like, shit happening, Mikael, it should make you want to bring your ass over there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, never mind. We ain't got no room for you. We got OG. <laughs> you know the Knicks and the, the Nets haven't made a trade together in 41 years. Damn, who was in that trade? Oh, I don't know. I just saw that stat you a couple know, days ago. I also had a little crazy. bit on my disappointment just because we didn't really get to see them all fully healthy. The, uh, I'm talking about the Knicks. Oh. And also, I remember when they when y'all got OG, this is like when Mitch went down, too. So I was like, damn, we can't get to see Mitch out there. Lie, and obviously, man. he came back. Now he just doesn't move the same. Like yeah. you, and obviously, For he's coming sure. back injured, so we don't really get to see the full version of Mitch. And shit. Yeah, he just, I don't know. He just <laughs> looks like he he got a lot of rust on him. He Shout out to our, but uh, Isaiah Hardenstein, y'all had players to step up. hit a three yesterday, stopped mm -hmm. playing with that boy. <laughs> Shout out to our homie, Stephen A. Smith, for what he said about the Knicks the other day. Hey, I'm looking at Grimes, looking yeah. fantastic. But Stephen A. Hardin Stephen A. Smith is your homie because I went in that room Hardin and Steve. Stephen A. Smith just looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> he was in work mode, man. He was in work mode. Um, but yeah, I just thought, thought that was funny. Um, I could throw out another surprise. Okay. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker. He was mm -hmm. on my list he was, too. He was on my no. list too. He was on my list. No. No, I'm not saying no. I'm uh, saying NAW. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it started with the Pelicans. Uh, and we had times the where he was better like, Alexander. <laughs> exactly. We thought he was gonna have the times where he's gonna show a lot of stuff, but obviously he kind of stayed kind of put. And it I took some shit, time. I got I got a history of saying shit like that, and they be in the comments somebody I hate when I'm wrong. <laughs> you know how much shit you can pull up when I've been wrong? Like like wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah. The better Alexander is crazy. <laughs> right. But they swear in the comment, Pete, Pete, Pete can't admit when he's wrong. You know how many things I've been wrong about to say that? <laughs> anyway. He could still be the Bella Alexander. He's still young. <laughs> he got it a took big, a couple big, years, but a big Timberwolves athlete. fans like, please. please. <laughs> he finally got like a positive rotational role on a team. Yes. And that's just yes. good to see. Yes. He was definitely struggling to get a lot of minutes on a lot of teams that he was on. And now he he went away from like the offensive minded guy to like he's gonna lock in defensively. And like I think that just fits that Minnesota culture. Now they literally have plus defenders all over the court guarding somebody. And I think when it comes playoff time, even though the offense get, get a little shaky, if you could just lock in and get stops on a consistent basis, your offense can eventually catch up. And the That's best, why I think they're a dangerous team, and he's a big reason for that. So you see some young players in the, he when shoots they come 39% come in. from three, and the vibe not crazy. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I mean, he's hit a lot of big shots for them. So, so you're yes, telling me. That's four attempts. That's pretty good. Four young player. players, when they come into the league, they should think defensively and then let the offense catch up and then boom. That, that might That's be what Pat Bev be saying. Uh, Jalen Green don't think that way. Uh, who? Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Oh, no. Green. 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 He should stay off. He should stay off. <laughs> the defense. The defense. Defense go came, came, I, came later. Defense go. Oh. At the offense, Jalen Green. What defense? He's, He's improving been, by his standard, but yeah, it's still no, no. not. No, that's what I'm saying. That's it's the one thing I'm trying to tell Rockets fans. Like, yeah. He's improved. To his Have you standards. seen a Jalen Green defensively uh, in terms of himself? Yeah, but we're not. Let's you not. Know, that's it's not, always a little bit easy to play defense when you got really good defensive players around you. Always, for sure. always, it's oh, always yeah. gonna be a little easy. When you're playing well offensively, you kind of you care more about the game. My little so when he was averaging 27 for a month. That's when I saw his best defense. My little brother told <laughs> me he got his second in game dunk. He said, I'm f I, "I figured out how to do it now, and when I do it, I'm gonna swing off the rim and I'm gonna be ready to defend." <laughs> you, you ever see somebody that's, that's what offensive players think you ever see somebody like we had exporting or something it's a close game and a dude get the bucket and he the first person on back saying let's go let's go yeah. you want to get that stop you ever seen that too it's close yeah. oh, yeah. let's go let's go D we lock it up baby come on who did we see I got back 
Who yeah. slapped the floor and got scored on? Oh man, oh, who did man. that shit? That was that went viral for a well, long time. Wasn't Malik time. Beasley? It might have been Malik Beasley. Beasley. I remember. When, I remember he had a Wait, play he where he, around him? with was. Tyrese Halliburton, where he was like sitting down in the stands, and Tyrese Halliburton just walked around. But I think that's, I a, I think that's a different clip, though. <laughs> this might be two. This might be two different clips. Oh man. I got a, I got a Shout out to B-Easy B's. Slap no, he don't get the nickname. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not his nickname. <laughs> That's Michael B's. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, my fault, my fault. He going to get paid, though. He going to get paid. Uh, Michael, uh, Mikhail, Malik Beasley. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'll throw out another disappointment. Mm-hmm. We, Donovan is, Mitchell slaps the four and gets scored on by CP3. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> they had to be, what, last year, two years ago? This is four years ago with damn. the Jazz. Oh, damn. This is in a playoffs. This That's why you don't mess with the GOAT, man. You don't? Don't mess with the goats. Uh, I'm going to throw out the homer pick. If you would have told me Anthony Davis would have his best year this year as a Laker, and we were still, like, fighting for that play-in spot. <laughs> he really I wouldn't probably believe that And shit. got his ass scored on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. When was that? This is four years four ago years in the ago. playoffs. He um, got, like, a mohawk and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that little ass mohawk. Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> but, no, for Anthony Davis to have his best season and, and LeBron to still obviously be – very good at his age, and I think the role players were right. We still did not just like it didn't happen to where we were at one of the top seeds. And I thought not just me, but I feel like I think it was maybe KB, uh, one of the other guys is like this is the late like this is one of the Lakers' better rosters coming into it, and it's more solidified. And they still ended up fighting for a playing spot. Well, it's because y'all get off to such a slow damn start. I think and then eventually s- y'all start hooping, and now y'all look mm-hmm. like a different team. I like think y'all had Austin Reeves coming off the bench for a stretch. And he's damn near your third best player. It ain't the playoffs, but AKA overthinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought, well, that, and also we, I feel like we just don't be capitalizing against the teams we should. And yeah. I guess the Grizzlies could be an example. We ended up pulling that out, but it's just like games that's supposed to be a W for us. It just don't always work you play like to that. Level your competition and what were we at? Like 46, 46 wins. That's honestly, season, that's bro. not bad. Y'all be good, it's really not bad. I feel what Mike's saying though. <laughs> you, those are the games where, like, going into the play in, yeah, beat the ass and yes. chill, bro. Yes. What do you have? Thirty nine or thirty? Yes. Like, come on, we ain't doing it. All look, Gigi Jackson is on my list for one of the, the uh, surprises. Surprises, but yeah. come on, bro. Really, Jake Laravia, Gigi Jackson got mm-hmm. y'all working. Got y'all with Scotty. That's supposed Jr. to be a game that's but like the Brooklyn sure. game. It's supposed yeah. to be over with. Yep. Uh, January first, y'all were twenty five and twenty five. Mm-hmm. Which five hundred team ninth seed? Y'all are now ten games over, mm-hmm. and you're still the ninth seed. <laughs> <laughs> you went from a five hundred team ninth seed to ten games over. Well, we always still the do be seed. saying every game matters in out west, and I was thinking about this too. And this is all hypothetical. It's a little bit of a tangent, but it's like I was thinking about all the young teams like Vic. Obviously, the Rock's going to be better. Jaw's going to come back. Like, how deep can the league – can we ever get to hypothetically 30, almost 30 teams deep? Now, of course, teams are going to lose, and it's going to change like that. But what's that? Every damn team is competitive. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I think no, we could get, we'll get to 30 teams. We could probably get to 25. Mm-hmm. I think next season, unless somebody really decides to blow it up for whatever reason, we could be at 25. The only teams I can say for sure won't be good next season. Pistons, Wizards. Piss, uh, Pistons got $60 million a cap. And though it's not a lot out there, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, the Blazers are not going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the Scoochies Wizards are not going to be good. Okay. In the midst of this conversation, well, name those teams. That, I think you can have a conversation about all of these other teams having a chance to be decent. Those are the two that I'm like rock bottom. They're not going to be good. Like I could see a world where – the Hornets are competitive. The full season of LaMelo. Yeah, I can see a world. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. I can see a world where the Pistons are competitive, where they're not 14, the worst I can see team in one. franchise history. I can you know? see that one. Yeah. All these other teams have a chance unless Toronto can be competitive. Toronto can be competitive. Brooklyn, is, I know we just they were competitive for majority of the season, so yeah. I can see that again. Uh, we know that the Grizzlies are going to be better. The Rockets are going to be good. The Utah Jazz are always competitive, at least through 45 games. I was looking at West, and it's like they could be 13, 12, 13 deep. We already got 11 fighting now for a mm-hmm. playoff spot. I already mentioned the, the Grizzlies going to have their players back, so that's 12. Who has the worst future in the NBA right the, now? The Bulls. I, would, uh, I have no idea how the Portland Trailblazers figured this out. Why is that? DeAndre, is, what is he? I mean, actually, Aiden has been had a very he has been, but this good is, but this is what he do, this is what he does. This I, is but what I he think does. I think because they technically again, just like the Wizards, is the first year of their rebuild, I think their future is pretty bright. Yeah, because they're going to have to make some decisions about that backcourt or the the guard position. Yes, 
Um, will they make the right decision? I don't know. But you would just assume that you're making some trades and you're going to get something Jeremy back. Jeremy Grant. You, right. That's why I feel okay about their future. Yeah. I mean, they missed the playoffs the last three years. So, you know, it might not feel like the first year of a rebuild, but technically it is because that was a first year post-Dame trade. That's why, for me, it's just like they got so much going on, but nobody. Who? who what am I going on? You know what I mean? Like, I like Anthony Simons. Do they do they like him? Do they love him? Are they more into school? Shaden Sharp, I, that's my guy. He's good, but is he a great young player? Like, we haven't seen that much. Jeremy Graham, Malcolm Brock, you didn't trade Brogdon. I'd probably trade him this offseason. DeAndre Aiden is good, but is he— Isn't Brogdon a free agent? No, I think he has one more year on his deal. Oh, okay, okay. Um, DeAndre Aiden has been good, but this is what he usually does. As soon as some expectations is put on the, on the Trailblazers, is he going to be what is you he need? Is he going to still be good? Robert Williams— Hurt the whole year. We, which, is, which is why I was telling Celtic fans when they traded him, that was the move to make. Celtic fans were telling me there's no way they give up Robert Williams you in the trade. Me? They Th- was three days like later, his ass was in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> three days later. Yeah. Because so. I, drew, I drew up a trade. I don't know if y'all remember that. I drew yeah. up that trade, and they were like, no way they're getting rid of Rob. Rob has played 30% of the season every year. Like, that's an easy player to trade away. Even though he's good when he plays, yeah. he's damn good when he plays. But if you're playing forty percent of the season and we're a championship team, championship quality team, we need people that can play. Ironically, they traded for Porzingis. <laughs> <laughs> he been I mean, he's, he's gonna be, he's he gonna be there. He gonna be there in the playoffs. Ricky Very Council, for, uh, for new for four year deal for the for the Seven Sixers. That's that's what's up, Ricky Council. Got it out the mug. Got rewarded with a real deal, seven million dollars. You woke up today and made seven. That's 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 that's, that's incredible. He woke up today and made, and now he has seven million dollars that he is gonna have. That sounds amazing. That sounds like that uh them TikToks where they be checking like they uh food stamp card and they be like, Your balance is five hundred and, and, the, they, and they, they just hang the up and they just say, Kids, we going shopping. <laughs> um I wanna get into like an NBA wrapped. Right? Spotify rap happens every year, your top artists, yada yada yada. I'm gonna ask y'all the top three teams. You watch the season league pass wise, mm-hmm. and why y'all think I'll give I'll give my. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves were the, my most watched team this season by far. Mm-hmm. My second most watched team. Um, let me go to my notes. Um, OKC Thunder was my second most watched team, and my third most watched team. Um, and this is not including like my Bulls, obviously, because yeah, yeah. that's number one. That, that, you know what I'm saying? My third most watched team this season um, was the Indiana Pacers, and oh. most of that was the first half of the season. Yeah. I won't lie to you. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been watching them as much, but first half of the week, the season, they were so fun. I mean, I guess they're fun still, but they yeah, were yeah. extremely fun. High powered offense, no look passes, every play, <laughs> lobs, Obi topping, tip dunks. Like it was a lot, and they were a very fun team. What what are y'all top three most watched this year? Uh, you mentioned OKC. Another one that I really feel like I enjoyed is the Magic, and mostly mm. because I feel like I'm really getting into that Paolo. Like I, I'm really big on Paolo. I just like the way he can like impact the game at his size, and I think that he's on the right trajectory. Especially with the we need to see the jump shot get better. I think he's had some ups and downs with it. But I feel like that's the thing that's going to really complete his game because a lot of times they're just giving him so much space. And he's really good at eating it up. But <laughs> I don't even know why that's so funny. You never heard of I'm this. immature. That's why it's funny. <laughs> he's really good at taking advantage of the space they do give him. But I think he's just going to be that much better if they can't just just give him uh, give him all that. Okay. That's <laughs> AT. One of my top teams was Dallas. Uh-huh. Um, it's just hard not to. You're the spokesperson of, of Dallas Mavericks, by the way. I am. You might have to add uh, them to your team, your list of favorite teams. I, I might. Because, <laughs> I mean, if Luka win MVP, you know, I might have some say in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might have been a swing vote for some yeah, voters. Might, they they might saw that video. Some yeah. But uh, that was also so crazy to even see. Yeah. I, I just I was on my I was just driving. Did and people I, just mention you a bunch? Yes, like so somebody D-Mills? mentioned me and I was. That's how I saw it. Somebody mentioned me like, look at D Mills. I ain't seen it like, until you dropped it in the chat. What and the I didn't hell? know what it was at first because I was yeah. also driving. And I heard Ernie to start off with. I'm like, okay. And then your voice came in. I I'm like, <laughs> deep as hell. <yeah. laughs> but uh, Dallas has just it's been hard not to watch Dallas because Luke has been playing amazing. Kyrie has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And um, when you have that dynamic backcourt like that. They just immediately just draw your eyes because they just so fun to watch together and they don't get in each other's way. So like it's it's hard not to want to watch that. Another team for me is also the Magic. Same reasons. Paolo. Yep. It's been good to see his second year leap. He's been a second year player that has carried his team to being one of the top five seeds in the East. Depending on how this last day go, I know it could change, but like 
record wise, they're they're in the we same. We didn't expect them to be like this. Yeah, no, we did not expect this type of leap from them. And I feel like it's more so like it's not from just Magic Apollo. Apollo. From the Magic, magic. Oh, from the magic, magic to be Apollo, this way. But yeah. I didn't know the whole but team. But it feels like they, they have like a legit culture. And I think that's always going to benefit your franchise more than it's going to hurt it. Yeah. Um, for and me. It, oh, go ahead. Oh, the Spurs have always. Spurs is on the it's, list It's as hard well. not to want to watch Vic. That's he a just, fact. He just kind of just amazes you every night. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to see his progression coming in as a rookie. Like how he kind of was, he struggled a year little bit Year one and year two. Like uh-huh. and then you slowly saw him progress throughout the season where he just literally got better in like stages. You just saw all the stages of his career develop. <sighs> Houston Rockets, number one, obviously. Clippers, number two. And I would say the third is a split. I felt like I watched a lot of Magic early on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the Magic are also a cheat code because they, I think they always wanted the first game yes. started. Yeah, they yeah. 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 Uh, Stem and the Hornets or some, some shit yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, Definitely watched like, more Hornets than I'm, I wanted to this season. <laughs> and then, uh, Just because they had 6 o'clock game. Yeah, and no, yeah. no other game going it's to like It's time to watch basketball. So we watched the first quarter of every Hornets game. That's basically what happens. And then the... Uh, the, the team that I uh, – Magic slash – I would go Mavericks for the second half. I've been really tuned into them. Um, watching Luka out, outscore, rebound, and assist teams in the first quarter by himself is always a joy and pleasure to watch. And then, yeah, some other teams that just get sprinkled in on some random shit. The Bulls. I had a stretch with the Bulls. So I was just really tuned into them. They had a time where they were kind of fun. Yeah, yeah they did. Um, the Kobe White Surgeons. Obviously, you sprinkle Wimby in there for sure. The say, Lakers, OKC kind the of Lakers causes that mix too. Just because they're the last team in the night. The Lakers always had the last game. Them That's night. why I'm going to be the Warriors, yeah. yeah. But I guess the Suns were doing it, too. Um, OKC was kind of in them, too. Obviously, they have Shea, but I felt like Chet was really fun to watch this year, too. Forgetting, or It's kind of easier to forget that it's his rookie season, too. But I watched a lot of Kings game this year compared to last year. I agree. Yeah, you said I did you not watch them as much last year. They, they, they were like my team. And I swear, they have, and they could have similar stats. I still remember that Malik Monk Kyrie game. I remember being oh, in my yeah. I remember being in my room and being like, "Is this?" Then they both had like forty. They was just going. That might have been triple overtime, double overtime. They came uh-huh. kept. Going. I never wanted that game to end. I was like building my bed I, or something. I don't even know if he meant when we saw about the Kings earlier. How they not going? They probably not going to have Malik Monk at all. Yeah, or Kevin Herter. Yeah. Um. What about the opposite? Your least watched teams this season. The least watched teams. I get besides, y'all. Now. Besides the the, the Brooklyn. Sh- yeah, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you. I've they got. I may games. have got three weeks into the season before. Which I shows it. we don't do a to- too much talking about them in depthly. It's we not talk me. about them from yeah. like the what heat. are they doing? A broader, yeah, yeah. I don't be like watching the Heat. The Heat is just <laughs> not fun to be, bro. The Heat do not play. Well, fun get ready, though. buddy. They're about to go on another finals I feel, run. I feel you, but I like Nikola Jovic, man. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really like that guy like a lot. He's uh, he's, he's in my cabinet file of favorites. I also mm-hmm. didn't watch much Utah Jazz this season. I didn't watch a they shit ton a of stretch, Pelicans though. games. Huh? I didn't watch a shit ton of Pelicans games. I have watched mm-hmm. some, but I haven't sat down and like really. They weren't one of my top league it's best It's cool. Teams. You got to see, they going to make it to the conference finals. You got no choice but to watch them. Yeah. He <laughs> said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, other teams that I feel like I didn't watch enough of. I'm like, again, I watch more Hornets than I probably should have. I watch more Pistons than I probably should have. I feel like that way with the Wizards because they were one of the early games. Another early game team. Pistons, I was really heavy. I feel like when the Pistons first started, I could tune in because I wanted to watch like a SAR and everything and everything started like if they had something. But once it got bad, it got bad, bro. Joel, after he got hurt, I really wasn't watching many Sixers games. But before when he was healthy, Oh, it was, it was tuning in to Sixers all the time. Yes, mm-hmm. it was. Oh, he's dropping like at least 10 to 15 first quarter. Yeah. Five rebounds. But once he got hurt, that Sixers watch time dropped significantly. It was just not really it's, much. I, I feel like I used to watch the sure. Clippers a lot too, but it kind of died down a little bit. Yeah. When, um, especially when they first got James Harden. Oh, yeah. it, was, it, was, yeah. it was glued to the Clippers game. You wanted to see how that trade was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But like those first 15 to 20 games, you probably was watching them nonstop. Um, I got a few different moments from this season, and I need y'all to rate them one through ten of how great they were, funny, memorable, whatever, whatever, in the in the scope of the 2023-2024 season. Draymond Green gets suspended indefinitely for his hit on Yusuf Nurkic. How will you remember that? How much you remember that? How impactful is it? One through ten. It's, a, it's oh. extremely impactful. Uh, I had mentioned it not too long ago. The Warriors probably not in the spot that they're in if he doesn't have to be suspended indefinitely. 
Um, it's impactful because it's a conversation that I think a lot of us thought was going to be closed off and done after the Jordan Poole situation. It's impactful because even after that situation, you think it'll die down, but still here and there, you still see these moments of Draymond where you're like, is, 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 here he goes again. Um, it's it's memorable because, yeah, it's so memorable because once you think you've reached the peak of it, it can get no worse. He kind of outdoes himself. He tops it. He tops it. So uh, even now, I believe he's topped it, but I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. No, I was going to say, it's, it's very impactful. On the scale, I'll probably put it around like seven, eight, because I think it also reminded us just how close of – how close it could be ending for this big three and how their dynasty could be ending. And that, that was a big part of it. I think when they look at this season and they think like we're fighting for this 10 spot or wherever they land on, that's just not how the Warriors want to be. You know what I'm saying? I think their future is a lot like their aspirations is a championship as long as Steph Curry is on the, on the team. So for them to have a year like this again, it's kind of sucks, you know? Yeah. And Aren't y'all cast siblings? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> clips, <laughs> clips for the random, but uh, random out of context. It's extremely impactful because this came after he choked out Rudy Gobert, and he already received a fat. What was it, five or ten? I don't remember. Twenty five. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Job was no, twenty five. No. Uh, Job yeah. was twenty five. It was like five. It was five games. games. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had a gun and you choked him. Same suspension. <laughs> 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 but yeah, for him to go off that five game suspension and then to come here and get suspended indefinitely, you just see that team just is never the same without Draymond Green. He does so many things that you can't replicate. Him and Steph's co- chemistry is damn near one of the best we've ever seen. So like you can't even duplicate what they do. Now that it's happened twice in the last week, you do be going on like some runs. They're like, damn, that's a clip. Like, if you, somebody wanted to just clip that Draymond Green moment and put it on a TikTok or something, they could. You know what I'm saying? And you know what's funny? Even what I'm noticing in this episode, I wasn't going to say it. He trying for him? It's not that he's trying for what? him, but he's, aw- <laughs> he's aware, uh, which I like. Which yeah. I like, yeah. If, if I wasn't even thinking I was trying to no, do No, I don't think I don't either. you're trying, but, but it seems like you're a little bit more aware. So you come and prepare to speak in depthly on things and not just, you know, some. I ain't gonna lie, you my man's. I ride for you. <laughs> you you and I've seen people in the comments also say it on TikToks. You can sometimes have some very generic ass answers. I can. Hey, how you feel about it? Well, you know, but you also have won most improved podcaster this season. He say, <laughs> did, did, I've heard Darius say some shit like this. How y'all feel about so and so? You know, he goes out, he competes, <laughs> he plays hard. I love the fact no, that, that, you know. I love the big wings. <laughs> the episode when we were doing What Have We Learned, that yeah. was that whole episode was ger- dener- generic yeah. Derek Sands. Of course, guess we can shoot the three. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, Derek, what did we learn? What did we learn about the Blazers? Well, they're a young team that need to learn how to, like, bro, yes, we know that, you know? <laughs> nah, that but was... then you also get in your bag, too. Yeah, so it seems like you're aware, you know what I mean? And I like that, it, because if you can find a bag. Was, uh, an eye opener for me. Uh, you might find a new. I'm just happy that you're aware because you might find a new lane. I, I I follow this dude on Instagram. You might follow him too. S- S- something Johnson and he does voices. Oh yeah yeah yeah. The, the king. He's like the voiceover is something. And I watch voice him on Johnson, Instagram. Right? And but I seen him in a Pelican game commercial. Yes, and he, he did was. a fucking. He was doing a commercial. He was at the. He was at WrestleMania too, making content. Too. Oh for real? But yeah. So you might can get you a bag as these teams spokesmen when they're trying to. Make a video, a hype video for Luka Doncic coming in or just the revenge tour. That was so crazy because there's so many voices they could have used. How the hell did they find me and use my clip? We have that. I know like, that. I know that we have a big platform, but it was it's so many. And then that that episode also ended up on ESPN's YouTube too. Oh yeah, it did. Um, so and they did like ninety thousand, ninety yeah. seven thousand. Like yeah. So yeah, people probably just. You, yeah. We know people. Remember, Imani? That are the social media people. We know the social media guy from the Blazers. Yeah, we do. So mm-hmm. I'm assu- I assume that a lot of teams' social media team may be There's aware of There's a lot of, of our show. clips of me talking that have never been <laughs> but, used. But you always, go, you always cross the bar. They don't want anything crazy. Yeah, yeah they, they don't want no glazing yeah. on their right. Twitter account. Yeah, right. Nah, you're right. right. You, when you talk about Dan, you sound you got you got paid to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know that back tattoo. That's Dan. That's Dan. He got that tattoo on his back right there. In his low, in, and he got this this that tattoo that y'all don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you might find you like get your extra bag. They gonna type you or something, send it to you. You just read it. Uh, the next one I got, I'm definitely available if you need me. Ferocious. He comes through the lane. Aaron Gordon twisting. <laughs> Grady Dick and Anthony Black jersey swap. That was 
that was amazing because it made you think of all the other jersey swaps he could do. And out, like Nasir Little. Yeah. Kobe White. Yeah. Um, there's probably a few more that I miss, miss them, but those are like the top guys that I would love to see. Mm-hmm. I'd say that's like a two. This is yeah, 24, for 24 hey, hours. Yeah, it was 24 hours. I'm, I'm yeah. 29, KB. I'm that shit was that. funny as hell to me. I'm sorry. Because it? it's it was. not just a picture. It's like them they, trying yeah, to they, get it. Yeah. And Anthony Black telling him, no, you on this side. You on this. Like, he wanted it to be perfect. And yes. we met. Did we talk to Grady Dick? No. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk to we Grady just had, Dick. We had Anthony, Anthony Black. Anthony Black is a goofball. Yeah. <laughs> we interviewed him. He's cool and everything. And we left and we came back. He walked in. He see Mike with that Lakers hoodie. He said they gonna get their ass washed. Or something. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, well, slow down. Don't let King Dan find out you done said that. <laughs> the next one, technically this season, but the offseason. Damian Lillard traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm gonna I go sh- nine. Yeah. Just because I didn't know that Dame felt like a pro lifer. Even when they was talking about all the trade rumors, it just felt like Dame was gonna be the until literally until he really couldn't be there no more. But you know, they funny. finally did it. Name was on my I, when we I was making. He was on my most disappointing list. Mm. It's sad to say, but he was. Mm. The efficiency is down. Mm. The production is down, and it's like you would expect this duo to look like a, you know, a yin and a yang. Yeah. Sometimes it just looks like Giannis is just out there just carrying the show. Even though we've seen Damian Lillard when he's not playing with Giannis, he goes out there and he carries the show. So it's like, can they put together one of those carrying LeBron type runs when it comes playoff time? Mm-hmm. And I just haven't seen many glimpses of that to where I can have much hope. And a lot of it is Damian Lillard. He hasn't really adjusted to playing with another All NBA type talent. I want to go back and rewatch a lot of that day or that um, LeBron Kyrie era. Because I, I don't, just watched them. Um, I don't uh, remember how much they pl- actually played off of each other. Oh well, I watch highlights. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know that's always going to be in the off season. Going to look sexy. NBA.com has it where you can watch every single NBA Finals mm-hmm. since yeah. like the modern era. I might just go back and rewatch their finals. The com- rewatch the comeback or something. Yeah. What was happening in games four Or watch four the regular through. season because the comeback is going to be the peak of peaks. I, I like that, though. Yeah. Because I, I remember where I was at during that game seven. It was <laughs> I was at that work during that game oh, seven. Damn. damn. I, was, I, oh. I was on my phone and I was listening to it. And I told you that's why I was so old. I told my manager that they won like game seven. And she's like... I hate LeBron. <laughs> and she Isn't it also me. the season where Kyrie hit that game winner over Clay Thompson on a Christmas game? That, that was, was the season after. That was the season. Oh yeah, yeah. He did do it after they went. Yep. Because they had KD. Yeah. Oh um, man. But that's why I was so happy tough. when you brought that Luca build out. Because I feel like my <laughs> dude is like Kyrie. Yeah. So I'm like, come on, you could be the Bron, and we got to figure this out. We got to <laughs> learn how to play together. I'll make a Bron build. Yeah, we need you to make a a Derek Lively build. No, thank you. Um, prayers to the life of family, though, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next one I have is Luka Doncic dropping 73 points on the Atlanta Hawks. This is a 10, man. This, this is a 10. Yeah, this is a 10. Yeah. Like, they, didn't, they literally made, let them play one-on-one the whole game, and you see what happens. Is Luka Doncic the greatest basketball player I've ever seen on my own two eyes? I don't know yet. Oh, Sometimes. You try to get the clip now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Sometimes yet. Sometimes he has performances where you just like. No, hey. the answer is no right now, but yeah. maybe someday. Yeah. That, you watch LeBron and Kobe. But ju- yes, but just the idea. I've watched Michael Jordan too. Just the idea. I'm older than y'all. Don't forget that. Yeah, when he was wearing Jordan 18s. The- <laughs> like, that shit don't count. <laughs> he went in wet throws. That shit does not count at all. But <laughs> just the I, I, I don't know. It, for me, as somebody who spent my life thinking I was going to the NBA, wanting to go to the NBA, barely yeah. putting any fucking work in to get there, but just having that dream. To think that somebody has the chance to be the greatest player you've ever watched at 25, just yeah. the fact that he has a chance is always mind-blowing yes. to me. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, I've watched LeBron, Kobe. I was asked this in the very Steph. early episode of my pod, like, of the current players in the league, how many of them have the potential to end up being top 10 players of all time? And immediately, I thought Giannis has a potential, obviously. Yeah. Jokic has a potential. Those guys already got MVPs and a championship. But Luka Doncic was right there. Yeah. Without, He's made an all-NBA team every year except his them. rookie season. Yeah, We're having this conversation. He, he don't have to win a championship Bro, for I, me to say this. And, or I, for, uh, and it MVP. feels like extreme, but I was I always be saying, like, when as soon as he came to the league, the impact he had on he could win you a game, it felt LeBron james S. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the magnitude of how good he is. And I think it speaks more... It speaks more to it because he doesn't jump out the gym. He's LeBron yeah. with a you bag. Know? Yeah. With less oh, you know, LeBron said he ate that when you talk <laughs> about his bag now. <laughs> For you know, real. You like, talk about I, his bag. I love the fact that man can almost dominate a game working out the damn post as a point guard. God said, okay, I made Bron. 
He's he, he, he. Let me get his six foot uh, seven dude with a beer belly. But <laughs> the best skill set ever. But to make things fair, give me your fucking athleticism. <laughs> we'll give it to Jalen Green. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> your muscles. Give me. Uh, we'll give that to fucking uh, who's uh, PJ Tucker. Here's some muscles, <laughs> and here's Luka Doncic. <laughs> we'll give him a little bit of post game. It is so funny that LeBron be like, I spend a million dollars on my body every offseason, and Luke in the offseason is hitting the, the hookah. <laughs> it's, like, it's so hilarious. Yeah, you want to hit it? <laughs> and then Jokic is over there playing with his horses, running yeah, yeah. on horse races. and Shout out to that horse carrying his ass around. It's Facts. a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Like, if you told me Jokic doesn't touch a ball for most of the offseason, I would believe you. I wouldn't. <laughs> he too damn good to not be working out still. But you know what? They, at the beginning of the season, he do be coming in out of shape. Not the last couple of years. That's why he's got his MVPs. No, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I think that's why Luca's in conversation this year. There was yes. no question about no, his yeah, fatigue. Luca came his, in ready because it was the the off season was the Olympic shit. Yes, so he's been playing all year long, and then he got another Olympic run too, which is yes, a lot of basketball. And you know what's 48. so crazy? He go over. I, he go overseas every year. I, in the off season I, I, and I play damn basketball. near like this is. Gonna, I don't even want to say it. It might sound stupid. I kind of like. Watching him more over there. When they be in a FIBA or now that the Olympics coming up, watch how Luca kill. Mm -hmm. Watch how he kill. Luca be over there going nuts. It was a sigh of relief. I'm pretty sure he didn't play in the game against USA. It was a sigh of relief. It's like Luca's good enough that like we had basically a B team at the FIBA. Yeah. And like Luca by himself could fuck up that B team potentially. <laughs> you know? And I don't know if it's because he over there with more respected colleagues that can kind of like say some shit to him, but he be cooking, man. He be having like 19 point triple doubles. Cause the reason I say he be cooking is because, yeah, he'll, he'll manage the entire game and w take a few shots. It ain't like the NBA where he gonna yeah. take twenty five shots or whatever. They actually run like a, de a fun system. That's why I can't wait for the Olympics because it's not the basketball that we know and we've grown accustomed to. Everything is different. Except for the objective. All right, the next one. While we're here, Joel Embiid seventy and eighteen versus the Spurs. Just like what two? That weeks was before. amazing too. Because or I'm gonna say it's like a, I'm gonna say it's like around a seven. It was amazing, but it's also we got the the Vic game with it too, and I think that was a like Tony Fanu, Birdie on part four. We got to see like one of the one of our all, all NBA players and then one of our new guys kind of face off. But Joel Embiid was was it a face off when Bro had seventy? No, I know, like he had a good it, game. No, it did. It was it's no okay. He has seventy, but this is Joel Embiid we're talking about. <laughs> I don't believe it's a coincidence. I believe Embiid said this. This is what y'all talking about. That's why I like. Yeah, it. no, I think. Did that's you why I, during yeah. that game, Joel Embiid when he was standing next to him, he sized him up. Not he looked at him like, damn, he really that big. I think Kelly Oubre did the same thing. Y'all is crazy, man. We got to grow up. <laughs> why? I like. I want. I think be, that's the char one of the charms of our show. Forever <laughs> young, right? I know you ain't talking, Miss. You was at home grinding your dude. <laughs> <laughs> now he want to be mature, right? Right. Go and get I a suit and tie. I don't like. If you come in here with a suit and tie, we'll have a whole mature episode. Maturity right. don't look good on you. <laughs> <laughs> guess I'm about to get a little bit more immature. LeBron James, the first player in the NBA. To score 40,000 points. This was That's 10. It was crazy as hell because they literally stopped the game. And <laughs> they like, did. It was a whole of celebration. They, they was losing. Didn't he get the mic too? And like it was like a No, I think that's when he passed Kareem when he got the mic. I don't know. Did he get a mic this time too? No, it's when he passed Kareem. I think. Oh, yeah, when he passed Kareem. Yeah, yeah. But Wait, that what was did you say? When he got 40,000. Oh, he passed Kareem yeah, last I season. I was thinking of passing Kareem. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is like a four. Yeah. Passing Kareem. Not passing Kareem was like the moment, but just, yeah, that's the I moment. I thought it was just because yeah. nobody ever. I don't know. No, I think sure. 40,000, it's, it's going to be a while before we see somebody else hit 40,000. No, absolutely. Yeah. But just when he when you become the number one, he's he's always going to yeah, be the ass. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like, who was it? Uh, Lil Will, who was it like leading for your points off the bench or whatever, all time points off the bench. He's like, he just going to keep adding to that until he retired. And that was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So The next one, Jokic's buzzer beater versus the, the Warriors. Oh, the one when he shot it from like the hash mark. Yes, this was yeah. nice. This was nice. He always last, last year he made a play. It was from Monte Ellis. Or was that? Was that two years ago? He made the play from Monte Morris. I said Monte Ellis. Do we all? He made the play from Monte Morris to hit the game winner against the Warriors. He kicked it out to him with some shit, mm. and now he hit the game winner. This shot was incredible. This and was it, you saw so much emotion with Jokic. Like yes, he, he just jumping and emotional. screaming. He was like, "Damn, Jokic." He wanted to bust their ass. Yes, he did. Well, he didn't bust their ass because he 
barely won. I mean, <laughs> hey, when I where I'm from, money, if you win, you bust, you bust they yeah. yeah. If I had the game no, win, I bust KB. your ass. <laughs> Bust your ass is 10 plus points. Thank that you. Is, that is what we've universally no, that's said. A, that's what we universally had came yeah. to. Because it would be like me and Kyron playing together. We win by one. Be like, I bust his ass. No, that's what I'm saying. I, like, can I, we, had, can I, I had, say to Steph, I bust your ass because I hit that game with a shot over you. He could say mm-hmm. that. Yeah, we went. I would say uh, we went game seven and you won. By and I bust point. your ass, right? I I, I called for the screen. Well, you can you say whatever you want. I, yeah, you, I, got the, tech, tech, I got in my That's why we call it the technical ass whooping is when it's 10 plus. Yeah, yeah. I would say I we, oh I made you run to Boston. I bust your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's ass bust. The next one, Sabrina Yonescu goes against Steph and you know Curry, bro. Boy, in a three point competition. Okay. This was a ten. This all time moment. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. This might change all. It's gonna change all star weekend. That was probably one of my favorite <laughs> moments <laughs> at <laughs> All Star. Wait, what? <laughs> What do you say? That's exactly what Braun be doing on that podcast. Bro. I knew it was gonna happen. No, no, he oh, was re- repeating I, I, I what finished, Pierre said, said like one second <laughs> later. I didn't even. I was thinking the same thing. I just said it. Oh, oh, shit. Like, Braun be like, <laughs> JJ be like, see, so yeah, when your first bucket was a little bit of floppy action. He's like, yeah, floppy action. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, bro. Can we can we relax a little bit? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and he don't change it at all. He don't add a word, subtract a word. It's exactly the last three words you said. Yeah, because y'all had lost to Jimmy Nelson. Yeah, we had lost to Jimmy Nelson. Yeah. Jimmy Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Podcast is still going. Though. I just seen a skit of somebody doing that, but they won't repeat. They was like, "How Braun be on a podcast with JJ?" It do had a wine. He had like something on his face. His beard. <laughs> that fake ass beard. He was like, so, yeah, a lot of guys in our league, they're just not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I caught a floppy actually come off JJ. AD is the roller. When he rolls, that tag man hit him. You got to hit that corner. And I just flipped the play. And a lot of my teammates, they don't know how to flip, they don't know how to flip, flip the play. The play. <laughs> JJ, I've been flipping plays since I was seven years old. <laughs> Call floppy out, shot flip play, they tag the roller. It's there. You just flip it to the left side. But a lot of guys will fuck them up, JJ. <laughs> And I was you crying. know what? I be feeling like that when we be playing pro am, bro. Oh boy, you I, just the LeBron of pro am. <laughs> no, I said, hey, I say, John, come set the screen and slip. He set the screen. He's standing there talking about hit it, hit the screen, like hit the screen. <laughs> oh, is, I, I said, didn't know you were talking to John. You bro, said you don't I know said, what a slip is, bro. They don't really know but it. No, and I say he that's just his said, fault. Because do you think John knew what a slip was? No. I say <laughs> set do the all ball. I say John has ball screen one year people. of high school B Mom. team basketball in his record. They, they, I said set the all ball for Pia. They come to set an on ball screen. I say y'all got the craziest thing I ever heard was, hey, when I'm rolling, you don't cut. Hey, when you roll, call it out. Let me know. <laughs> you ain't watching us. You, you know what? No, you know what it is now that blows my mind. People don't understand. You you learn this shit in early basketball. Space the guard the space. Not the space. Uh, this is on defense. No, that's and what I'm this saying. is a tangent too. But look, I, definitely listen, a tangent. If if I'm on the left side of the court and somebody's all the way in the corner, like you're far away from the ball. Yeah. You never you ever hear when they talk about help defense how everybody's on a yeah, string on defense. Help. Mm-hmm. Right, at the ball all the way over there, I should probably be a step or, or like be a little bit more ready to help. So I can help the helper. Because I can also get back to my man For with sure. all that. Why is you hugging your man? He ain't did nothing and you all the way over there. This is a tangent that went. I agree with him on that. <laughs> it's so many people in our league who it don't is, understand, yeah. oh, my man ain't did shit. This dude got 30. So you know what? I'm going to help. And if my man makes a couple shots, then I'll moderate my help. But it's like you'll you'll have you'll see a dude got zero point zero shots being denied. He like this, <laughs> just straight up on. <laughs> like, well, I think a lot of it goes to them wanting to say, "My guy ain't do nothing." Right. Yeah. I know. I I said this too. I was like, I was telling we were getting killed on defense, and one of our locks, whatever, he kept pressing the ball, and it wasn't even the point guard, just because his man was inbound the ball, he's trying to get a steal. I say, you don't need that. Get back. He said, "Why? My man <laughs> inbounded." I said. Where, you have so teammates beat, that can, you you have teammates yeah. that can need help that are getting beat with back doors, and you're up there talking about your man not scoring because he inbound. We playing our boy Don crashing off his glass. Why? <laughs> you, you, it's why? just be little things. It's like you why? can make an adjustment and be so. Hey, much P, you good. right? I ain't even got offensive rebound. Oh my gosh, that's even <laughs> where I wish you didn't even tell me that. <laughs> but yeah, the next moment, Kyrie Irving game winner versus the Denver Nuggets. 10, 11. 11, yeah. 11, all even. Just because it's 11, just a, it's 11, a, oh yeah, 11 plus uh, for the difficulty too. Because with the left though, left, left hand over Jokic, with the left, left hand hook over Jokic, that's, that's tough. Shout out to that boy, uh, Tyler. What's his last name? Up, Up Church. Church. I had to get that one framed, man. Uh, Max Struess 
half court game winner versus oh that was nasty the Mavericks that was nasty this is so nasty that it slipped my mind I remember it but until you brought it up it wasn't in my memory so but this was a nasty shot yeah it was because didn't he have like a crazy fourth quarter that game he, he did, did. Yeah, I think he, it might have been just a regular game off. And he topped it off with that game winner that was immaculate got to top it off the Mavericks were so sick boy yes but then they won the next game I'm pretty sure which was important. Oh, that was like a two-game series they had? Uh, no, like a back-to-back situation. Oh, okay, okay. Next one. It's the one that happened a couple nights ago, so maybe it's not that high. Um, Tory Craig self-lobbing and drumming trying to catch the 20, self 25. This th- <laughs> defines the Bulls season, I guess. It's, it's on the stupid meter. <laughs> yep. I would. That's where I would put it. Would put it. I don't even f- know Tory Shaq Craig as a dunker. For him to do this, so what was he Andre doing? Drummond didn't either because he went up. You know and what that reminds me? That shit reminded me of when Andrew Bynum took that three as a Laker. It was just uh, like, what the hell is you doing? Yeah. The next one, Greg Popovich grabs the microphone to tell the crowd, "Excuse me for a second. Can we stop booing and let these guys play? It's not who we are. Knock off the booing." And he was trying to instill that San Antonio culture into the crowd. This shit happened so long ago, it don't even feel like it's this yeah. year. And he's probably over the Kawhi shit. He was probably wondering, why are you booing him still? Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one. Steph Curry hits a triple with 0.7 left versus the Phoenix Suns. Remember when Bradley Beal gambled on that pass and yeah. then oh, Steph yeah, Curry yeah. open? That was crazy. Because the pass from Brendan Pazemski was just so perfect. Perfect. Wasn't it was, really was on the Discord watching this, weren't we? Yes, we were. And yes, it we looked were. like it was a bad pass that was off. But it literally was the most perfect spot that he could have put that damn ball that if he would have thrown it just slightly off, Bradley Beal has the steal. So, like, it was a bad gamble, but it was a gamble that was, like, one point off your parlay from you hitting 100,000. Like, that, that's how close it was. Anthony Edwards posterized John Collins. Oh, that was 10. Don't I hear everything 10, Cause, but cause that man, Because yeah. that man literally had to lead the game due to concussion protocol. <laughs> That's how bad that dunk was. <laughs> he said, I, I got to get my jersey to too. Collins. And yeah. then looking at him in the post game, looking at the rea- at the um, review of it, being like, little ass nigga. Like that, that, that all just embodies that it. That or the block. For, uh, Both with of the them pacers. left the game because you remember he hurt his hand. His oh, hand got this little finger hand, got this yeah. That yeah. or the block with the pacers. Oh. He, he that hurt block his hand win the game. Yeah. That block was still He touched basically the top of the backboard. Yeah. Yeah, that block was nasty. Because didn't he hit the shot? He hit the shot before that block, right? Did he? Somebody hit a shot before that. Well, yeah. That's, Maybe that's, it was him. I don't remember. Game. But then, yeah, then they he got that block. That block was crazy. Yeah. Well, that was on my list, so y'all already talked about it. Okay. Um, the Detroit Pistons lose 28 straight games. I'm going to say that was like a – again, I feel like I'm giving everything a 10. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bit – I'm going to go say like an 8 or 9. And that's because they were so damn bad. I feel like the world was locked in like, yes. is they going to lose again? I remember people were placing bets. The Pistons are not going to win a game for the rest of the, the rest final of the season because that's how bad they were playing. Yeah. And it's funny because the Spurs would be just as bad. And you can tell, yeah. They had lost like 17 or 19 games or yeah. something like that. But it just got over the slut. I mean, setting a record for most losses is crazy. Um, that's all the moments I have. I know there are a lot more moments throughout the season that should be talked about, but we can't get to them all. Yeah, I can't think of it. We should have had the uh, Jordan Poole moment where he was – during the timeout, oh. when he was talking during the like, they were trying and to run a like play he and he was, was talking. And then once they get out to the court, because uh, the timeout was done, he trying to look back and find out, what the, out what the was. play was. <laughs> that that was insane. Because like, how are you the point guard and you're in the huddle? Your coach is drawing up a play. You're pretty much the coach on the court. Why the hell don't you know what the play is? <laughs> you're supposed to be the one setting up everybody. Oh. But he's actually not really a true point guard, so I, I kind of understand. It's that. just funny because if some of the other contests is like, this is my team. Like, this, yeah, yeah. I'll run this shit. And it's just like you just in the spot now where you look like a jackass. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comment section your favorite and least favorite moments of the 2023-2024 season. Um, do we have Unplugged? We would, but they're saying that uh, Drake – this track has leaked and they don't know if this is real AI. Oh, oh AI generated. That's the worst part about 2024s. It's a lot of AI so generated. So my stuff. attention is to figure out if this is real. You know what's crazy? I, I swear I be on Twitter and like, like Complex has posted this. Like they're saying it's a Drake diss, but like they don't know if it's real AI. Drake this is track uh Drake Drake's diss track tours Kendrick Lamar, Metro Boom, and Rick Ross and more has seemingly leaked online. Complex music. But everybody is saying this is scary because is this real? Is this AI? I don't. I, 
That's kind of crazy to think that you can try to put together such a great body of work and then just gets leaked before you want to release it. That shit messed up, bro. We were talking about that when that happened. Uh, who was it? Twenty or Young Nudie and like Lil Uzi? How they shit got leaked, leaked or whatever. Yeah. And it's just like you. That's that's your shit. Yes. And it's just like somebody's like, nah. I'm going to do whatever I want with it. Like, and that shit is a whole invasion, bro. People are saying, if this is real, Drake won round one. So, I... I you want to hear it? Yeah. I don't blame you. Um, I'm, I'm definitely excited to hear it, too. Yeah, we're going to wrap this episode up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out if this is real. Um, drop some unplug ideas that y'all want to hear. I, sometimes I come with the conversations. I don't like, does this resonate with the crowd? You know, so let, let me know. I'm going to be looking in the comments, but... Yeah, y'all enjoy y'all weekend, man. It's almost play-in time. Play Let's in, get baby. ready for the play-ins and the play-off, baby. I'm excited. Can't wait. Resurgence. Peace.